we stay on track of what we're doing today, all right? Do you have, like, everything in front of you, basically? Uh, more or less, yeah. Okay. Uh, we can, we'll figure it out. Yeah. All right, I'm just going to get started. Welcome to the Games Beat Decides podcast. I'm your host, Jeffrey Grubb. We're live from E3 2019. I almost got the year wrong. <laughs> it's um, been that kind of weekend. It, I do that all the time. Yes, it's, it's, it's Monday. It's day three for our podcast. We've been going since Thursday, though, cover, covering stuff, and yet E3 still hasn't opened. It's absurd. We're going to talk about everything that happened today, which includes Microsoft, Ubisoft, and Square Enix for the big ones. There's some small stuff in between that we'll probably just touch on. PC Gamer, kind of funny. And we're not going to go over those piece by piece like we yeah, will with some of these bigger yeah, yeah. shows. Um, but we'll talk, we'll talk about some stuff from those things. Before I do all that, though, let's introduce who's with me. Why don't we start over here with Giancarlo. I'm Giancarlo Valdez, and I am a freelancer for Gamesby. Am I saying your name wrong? Jean, it's Jean, Jean Carlo? Yeah, I don't really mind. <laughs> Fair enough. All right. You can call me Jeef then. How about Jeef? Yeah. All right, Jeef, bro. All right. I'm Mike Minotti. I'm the reviews editor of GamesBeat. And I'm being nice to Mike so that I get Mario Maker 2 review copy. You're a good friend and you're so beautiful. Yeah, you, you're so upset because you thought I literally had the code. And I, I forgot my Switch! Was, I mean, it's upsetting to forget my Switch anyhow. Yeah, how'd you do that? I, I was just, I mean. I mean, I know how you did that. Yeah, it's I a mean, dumb question. Yeah, it's just. <laughs> I'm got way going, more stuff going on. Going non stop, right? Yeah. <laughs> and it, I, I put it on the charger and I just forgot. Um, so, yeah, we could talk about my lost Switch or we could talk about E3. I think most people prefer E3. Um, so, yeah, we got up this morning, and it was it was basically like, let's get to Microsoft, but also, at the same time, the PC gaming show is happening. Which none of us really watch. Right. So, <laughs> the only thing I want to bring up from that is is Dota Auto Chess going to Epic Games. Um, and that's, it's, that's kind of a misnomer. Dota Auto Chess isn't going. The, devel the, the, the developers that made the mod, Dota Auto Chess, are going to make a version of that game, sans Dota, f exclusively for Epic Games. Um, right. This seems to be like the, what, what caused the fallout between that company and Steam and Valve uh, and why they're like, okay, well, we're going to work separately, but we're also still going to collaborate in some ways. And it's because Epic paid them money to come and, and do this exclusive version. I, it's a big deal. It's always funny when it's like an announcement because it seems like an announcement that, it's like specifically an announcement that a lot of people are unhappy about a lot of the time, it seems mm -hmm. like. Yeah, and it does feel like, I mean, I guess, I guess they're hoping that eventually like there will just be so much content that people are going to get over it. And I think they think they could just burst through that. Like there's a the seal and they're yeah and they're tr pushing through the bubble and eventually it's just going to break over on the other side where people are like, well, all the stuff I do play is just on Epic Game Store and it's getting features. It. Yeah, yeah, I I think that might be their strategy. Especially once the feature parody. I mean, and, and it's like part of that strategy is really easy when they just have so much money to spend that it's like, well, we can't stop now. Like we're already spending all this money, we can't stop now. They're in deep. Yeah. Um, whatever. Like, they, they, either you care about this or you don't. And if you care about this, uh, you you probably already know more than we can explain. It was just an interesting thing. I'm not surprised it happened at the same time. Um, but yeah, we were all uh, we all went to uh, Microsoft to go hands on with some stuff this morning. Different so, appointments right. divided among us. Yeah, Microsoft always does like a showcase event, and it goes on through the week. But the one day they invite like the press in, and we you, you can get a lot of stuff done there, really, because the lines aren't very bad. There's like, Pretty much all their games there. They don't even have show floor space anymore. Um, no, yeah, I, I can't even remember. Like, last year they had the mixer booth. I don't even know if they have that this oh, year. Oh, they don't even have like the big. I don't. I don't know if they do. Oh, oh they yeah. definitely don't. You know, I don't think don't, so. I was no. looking because somebody in, my, in the line just told me that. I was like, I don't believe you. Microsoft must have had it last <laughs> no, year. No, they didn't. No, no yeah. way. Yeah. yeah. Um, but uh, we went in there and I, I wasn't sure what to expect. And it turns out it was actually a super productive day. Um, it was cool. So, you know, we saw everything in the in the, their showcase online and in the stream yesterday, or in person, I think Dean went in person. Um, and today we, get, we kind of went hands-on, and I, I definitely feel better about Microsoft having gone hands-on. Well, gosh, yeah, some of those games were a lot better when you played them as opposed to just kind of seeing them. Yeah. Like, like what? Well, Gears of War, I mean, because they... I don't know, what is that? <laughs> Gears 5. Oh, God. okay. All right, see, I was confused. Gears 5. Um... <laughs> I, yeah, that was the first thing we sat down to play, and it was... I, it was that new mode. What, did you guys uh, play escape. together? Or separate? Yeah, it's three-player co-op. Um, it's so yeah, it's that new thing they're talking about. And again, like, watching their video, I had no idea what this was. Yeah. And then we were playing it, and it, it, it's it's not horde mode. What are you doing? Oh, God, get your water. <laughs> it's not horde mode, but it's still like that three-player co-op experience, and you're, uh, it's like you're progressing. Like, you keep moving forward through a map. You still have, like, your special abilities. Now, as I was doing this, I was like, oh, it's like a fun twist on Horde mode. As I thought about it later, I'm like, well, that's just a level. <laughs> yeah, we were just going through a level. So I'm still confused about exactly what Escape is. So Because our, de well, our demo crashed halfway through. So we that's true. It. So um, maybe there was something to it at the end. I mean, I enjoyed it, though. Really. I'm having fun. I, it, yeah. plays, it plays well. 
it if it is just sort of like missions with gears controls and stuff and all and all the gameplay right and like a lot more customization with your character right and it's like maybe they're rolling out new levels all the time maybe there's some like more more random elements to it sure i think that that could really work i think i mean people already like horde mode for specific reasons and i think um while playing through the campaign co-op is one thing having a mode dedicated to just multiplayer going through levels uh it, it is uh more casual enough that it's something that I might be more willing to jump into. And if it's like jump in, jump out, which I don't know if we got an answer to whether or not that's the case, uh, that'd be that'd be great. Wait, as so well. did you not be played like a whole match. match because it crashed? No, we yeah. got we got pretty deep in, but okay. it crashed during like the big. We were, there was a big boy attacking us, and the, it just couldn't handle it anymore. Couldn't so. handle the big boys. Could, well, we couldn't <laughs> handle it, the big boy. Couldn't handle us. Right, is what right. I choose to believe. It was cool because ammo was <clears throat> actually pretty scarce in the demo. And, like Jeff's character's ultimate was basically that. It was like a circle, and if we stood in it, we got ammo. Right. I just, like, had, like... And we were running out of ammo all the time. Like, it wasn't just, like, limited. It was... We were popping off a few rounds, uh, and then all of a sudden I had zero, and I'm waiting for my ultimate to build up. And so we were getting... You do attack melee a lot of times, uh, and we had to, I had to just kind of rely on you to, like, once you... I think you are the melee character. Right, because my ultimate was, like, my, I had, like, a knife for a bit that would do a lot more right. melee damage than normal, and that was, like, a cooldown. Right, so, like, yeah. And the other guy had a shield... Kind of thing. Yeah. And so we were just kind of like, you're just kind of waiting for these things to happen so you can um, uh, go back in and really get in the shit again. But uh, it, I, I could see this be, this working really well. Uh, it's not revolutionary. It's not going to suddenly like, turn like a non Gears fan to like on to the series or anything. Yeah. But I'm, I'm always on the fence about Gears where it's like, I, I appreciate it from a distance, I think. Yeah. And I'm never really like, oh, I need to play That's the thing. I, I know. I'm always cynical about Gears. Like when I'm actually like forced to play it, it's mm-hmm. like, like you, I'm not, I'm not it problem reminds you with it. like how, how much fun it is, right? Probably, like, I mean, the shooting does usually feel pretty good and it looks very nice. Yeah. But yeah, for some reason I'm always just like not enthused about it. I, I, yeah, I, I'm the same way, and, but yeah, I had a good time coming out of it, and and it's like they didn't show gameplay. I, we don't, we still don't understand that. And, and it was, so, it, was mean, such, it was so much the story mode. What? No, we haven't seen gameplay of anything. They didn't show gameplay at all yesterday. Oh, oh yeah, yeah, at the conference. Yeah. So it was, this was a lot better. Yeah, there's definitely a much better. Like obviously playing the game's better, but still, just like showing people playing this mode. Well, would, I, would have been I've been better. thinking about because we, this we just harped on this over and over yesterday, and it's like. It, it, the point of showing gameplay is it, it, it might be difficult to make gameplay interesting in a show like this, but that's the point. Get creative and force yourself to show why your game is fun when people are playing it. And, and if you can't do that, that's a, that's a problem maybe with the game. Um, or more with the people who are like putting this whole thing together, but like really force yourself to be creative and show why it's, it's exciting. I just and they didn't do that. Possibly for later, but going on that, I'm like, look, if... Square Enix was able to show Final Fantasy XIV in-game stuff for its trailer <laughs> for the new Final Fantasy XIV expansion. It was a long trailer, too, and it was great. You it know? Was, I, that was you're right. That, I, like, I said I don't like on. the beginning and the end of that, but I like that too. Actually, they were doing a good job there. Um, Giancarlo, you kind of got in a little bit after us. Uh, I saw you like walking past, and I had to catch up to you and try to freak you, you actually out. Actually, told me to go the wrong way. No, I did not. <laughs> I yes, definitely I didn't. No, no, I did not. What? What do you end up? Where do you end up going in at? I had to go in the back on Georgia Street behind the Microsoft Theater because that's where the behind closed doors demos. I wasn't there for the showcase. Oh, which I guess it's like two different things. Oh, well, well, okay, well. my bad. Ha, you idiot! Fuck! I feel bad now. You made me sixty seconds late. <sighs> Every, wow. Everyone told me to go the other direction. Sorry. <laughs> <Very Yeah. laughs> um, but then, what you? What were you there for? What were you getting your hands on with? So actually, I ended up having the same appointment as Dean for twelve minutes, which mm-hmm. is the uh, indie game from Annapurna Interactive. The meeting was only twelve minutes. No, that's double ah. that. <laughs> Ah. But it's the uh, it's the Groundhog Day type game where I guess your wife always dies. Is this uh, this didn't do much for me at the thing. What are they saying, Jeff? Are they being mean to me? No, keep keep going. Yeah. Um, so it's the whole premise is you're you're living the same twelve minutes over and over with your um, with your wife, and you gotta prevent the cop this cop who always comes after three minutes, and you gotta keep convincing your wife, hey, you know, I'm actually a time traveler, and I've seen this before. Um, and if you fail, he just drops magically to the next twelve-minute loop. And is whenever, this like? Is it yeah. like Hey You Pikachu, where there's a microphone, and you actually oh. talk to her? No. no, no. But there's gonna be voice acting. But the demo we saw didn't have voice acting in it. Oh, okay. Huh. Yeah. Well, I, mean, I guess that's fine. That's yeah. Uh, so, um, so are you choosing from dialogue trees? Yes. And then the, is that the main gameplay? No, it's also kind of like a point-and-click adventure game. Okay. So you know, it's a top-down view because it's really mostly one guy that's making it, um, <coughs> and you can search to. Through drawers, through like kitchen stuff, you can even like put things in your inventory, like a knife and a present. Like at one point in the demo, you you're rummaging through your wife's drawer, you find a present, and um, one of the other journalists who was playing just took it. 
But then when you talk to the wife, the wife is like, hey, you know, that was a surprise. You weren't supposed to see that. So there's kind of these little consequences here and there, depending on what you do throughout the level. But if you, like, took the present, could you be like, well, I know, I could tell you what's in here. Yeah. To prove yeah. to oh, you yeah. that so, I'm So that does travel. happen in, like, the third or fourth uh. loop. And the, what, what the designer, Louis Antonio, was saying is that your character also, like, gains more knowledge the more loops you go through. So you, you unlock more dialogue. So, like, yeah, there's, that exact situation pops up. He's like, hey, let me prove to you what's in there. It's baby clothes. Because it turns out she's pregnant. Right, right. Um, so, I mean, so what do yeah. you end up thinking? Like, I, I, was, I wasn't sure what to make of this on the stream. Yeah, it's, it's kind of interesting. I guess I was, I was asking the guy, like, how do you prevent it from being from feeling, like, too repetitive? And he said the hope is that you'll keep finding new clues, like, new dialogue trees to kind of, like, unlock everything. Mm -hmm. And he said it would take about six to eight hours to kind of, like, find what he called a satisfying conclusion. Hmm. Yeah, so he, he, he was talking a lot about Groundhog Day and how like time loops work in, in that movie and, and, and other um, other forms of media. So he's kind of being a little bit vague, like of course, like you know, he wouldn't tell us exactly what you need to do to break the loop. Of course, but that's yeah. part of the mystery and part of solving everything. How to break the death loop? Right? Yeah, 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 basically. Um, I, I'm interested. I'll, I'll, it's one of those games where I'm like, I'm probably just gonna have to play it to like actually see how I feel. Yeah, about to get it. some hands on. Right. Um, did you get a chance to play anything else? Or were you? No, that was I was just there for that. Fair enough. Half okay. An hour. So then, Mike, we um we kept going for a little bit. Um, actually, I went to I, after that Gears of Five demo. I went to Gears go, of Five. Night Gears, Mike, Gears of Five. And that's its name. That's what it says right on the box. <laughs> um, I went to um, um an appointment to play Minecraft Dungeons, which uh is basically it's a Diablo clone. It's it, a Diablo, yeah. And it's it looks really good. Uh, I would say. Uh, I got a chance to play it as well. But the developers were explaining. Um, and who's, who's making this? It, Mojang. It's still there. Okay. Yeah, absolutely. And they, they said Mojang, too. So it's like... Yeah, wait, I thought it was Mojang. I know. I, I went back and forth. And I'm like, I'm, I was about almost said Mojang, and then I let them say it first. And yeah. <laughs> um, I, I think it's going to be really successful. It's going to be huge because it is definitely taking a ton of stuff from Minecraft. And it has... You know what, you know what it is? It's like Fortnite. The reason Fortnite works so well as a battle royale is because it's it's just as complicated as any other battle royale. In some ways, it's more complicated, but it has this art style and this aesthetic that is super easy to understand what is going on. Mm -hmm. It's very easy to visually parse every little action because the characters are very cartoony and, and they make exaggerated motions. And the Minecraft world, is is it works the same way. Kids instantly recognize what they're looking at. Um, so there's, there's that element, and then there's still like all this depth of like each... Each piece of equipment you're picking up is has a ton of different stats on it, and I mean, I think what we've learned from Pokemon is that like kids love digging into these really complex stats into every little thing. Mm -hmm. They love picking that apart, even pretty young kids. Oh yeah. Um, and and they like ha they like mastering things, and this game is not going to shy away from enabling them enabling them to do that. The difference here is that. There aren't classes. It's you're not going to be going and choosing like, oh, I'm going to be the, the the brawler or the mage or the mage. Or, huh. Your stuff is all, all, all it's all based on like what what equipment you pick up. So if you pick up the bow and arrow, you have a bow and arrow. If you pick up the uh, you pick up like a staff to shoot magic, you could shoot magic, but you don't have a magic skill. You're not leveling that up. The stuff you're leveling up is like you get enchantment points that you can use to add more powerful enchantments to the equipment. And the equipment does get more powerful throughout the game, so you are progressing in that way. Oh, okay. um, but like at any time, you could just go ahead and be whatever kind of character you want just based on what you're picking up. And they're like, that might be broken. It might be unbalanced, but it's it's been fun. And that's yeah, all we they care about. Yeah, they really don't need to care about like, and I, I mean, like, the absolutely that right. wouldn't fly, right? Because right. you have like or leaderboards right. and stuff. Yeah. yeah, and they're like, we don't care about that stuff. It's just, we're just trying to make it fun and it's, yeah. it's really working. Um, and I think it's going to be the kind of game where uh, parents are going to be able to play with their kids, and parents are going to have just as much fun as the kids. This is not going to be a reluctant play for it, for I think anyone. I was I was ready to just keep playing when they had. But, but how did the, the combat feel then? Like when you're actually hacking your sword or using the bow? And... <clears throat> um, I, you know, it, it it does feel pretty close to like what you would expect. It, I mean, okay, using the sword felt really good. Hmm. Using the bow and arrow was like. You kind of do have to just like line it up and then hit the button. You can't like move before hitting the button because you'll aim or in you the wrong you direction. Move, move and shoot. Yeah, it, not too much. Like yeah, it, it, you'll aim in the wrong direction too much. So it's like you have to really kind of plan your shots. Mm -hmm. um, but it, it worked. It felt really good. I, I I liked it. It's one of those games. It's like I can't wait for my kids to be a little bit older to play with me because I think they're all gonna really be into it. Um, but yeah, uh, Mike, I came back to meet up with you after that, and you had played a few things. I played. 
it's is it bleeding edge or killing edge? It's bleeding, bleeding edge. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> so this is from this is the new game from um, Ninja Theory. Ninja the one, the Theory. one that leaked like two days before. Right. Yeah, yeah. And it's their four on four melee mostly. Kind of, it's kind of MOBA slash Overwatch. Okay. It's, it's you know it's it's like the team based multiplayer. Yeah. Type. The, mode, yeah. the mode I played had control points. So yeah, it's like, it control yeah. points. You you play as these characters, support, tank, or like damage. Third person or first person. Third person. It's okay. not supposed to be. Fun. But the, the difference here is that like. <laughs> Yeah, it's almost more Moby because, like, unlike Overwatch, there's more of a focus on melee abilities. Even the characters with projectiles, you're not aiming. It's not like a shooter. You just lock on to people. Okay. But it was super fun. I mean, first off, it looks very good. Mm-hmm. and Very polished. Very polished. Like, the, and outside of Overwatch, some of the best character designs I've seen from one of these games. Sorry. No, that's fine. Like, oh, like, that's one of the things that, like, Overwatch is so good at, right? Just the character designs and the silhouettes and, like, the ideas were super cool. It was, like, something where, even though I like Apex Legends, like, that aspect of it is not nearly as yeah, good no, no. for a hero-focused yeah. game. I, I do like some of those characters, but it's not, just overall, it's it's not there for me. I no, agree. but uh, this game, like, all the characters were really cool. Like, I was this healer. It was basically like, a snake, and the snake was, like, wrapped around this kind of, like, body or, like, corpse or something mm-hmm. that... Was like, mo- like it was making move for him, but I was the what? snake, not this guy. Yeah. Huh. And then there's like the rock, like the like the rock guy has like the guitar. There's that like the the, the bigger woman who like is a motorcycle, <laughs> like she is a. But motorcycle. I, I think she actually, I I looked at it today. She's actually just sitting on a unicycle mm. motorcycle, and she has legs. So oh, yeah, okay. I was surprised to see that. Well, it's like it, again, like like real moba ish, like you can mount up to go faster. She just like turns into a motorcycle. That's cool. Like a lot of the other people are hoverboards. Right. And stuff. Like Christian asks, "Do you like <laughs> Battleborn?" Uh, well, it's better. I mean, it's not as... <laughs> but Battleborn's problem was that it was so convoluted. Mm-hmm. I mean... But is it, like, wide be, open like But that? because they're MOBAs, kind of. Yeah. But... Yeah, I mean, but there, there's not, like... You're not defending any ancients here. That's not what's happening. <laughs> right. I mean, it, like, the playstyle is kind of MOBA-ish, but it's not the free lane thing. It's I mean, more, I, like, it, 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 control point... It's like a control and point... There's, and there's melee characters. There's way more melee characters than you well, would MOBAs give Well, MOBAs have a lot of... That's what I'm saying. Yeah, that's so the part that's... why it's moba Yeah, mm-hmm. um... But and even like even the characters like I was playing a character with a minigun and her range is very close still. It's like mid range shots right. and that means like fifteen feet. Right. So, so like the whole yeah the, the kind of the focus on the even the kind of melee combat it is because even in the mobas it's point and click. This is more like run around and like push these buttons to attack people and you know it's still very cool down base. But it did it feel it did feel different while being very familiar, different and also just looks so cool that I'm I'm interested in it. I think it'd be fun. I, I, I had fun, and I'm, I'm looking forward to playing more. Yes, absolutely. Um, it's it's going to be free to play. Did your right? team win? Oh, yeah, because yeah. I healed those bums to victory. <laughs> Our team was winning the entire time. It was like 475 to like 470. They were catching up. Um, I was 16-0, and 0 and we're in the last battle, and I'm like just like trying to pull it off, and I finally got my death, and that was enough to put them over to win. Oh. And I was 16-1, and 1 yeah. and our team lost. 16 kills, one death. Look, I had 13 kills and three deaths or something. My shoulders, Mike. Yeah, well, I was the healer and I had 13 kills. Fair enough. All right, fair <laughs> enough. I, I think it, I'm just blaming other people. I want to make it clear for the record it wasn't my fault that we lost. Yeah, that's okay. <laughs> I agree. Um, I, uh, let's talk about Battletoads. Man, that surprised me because Battletoads was did not look good in the presentation. I think we, I think everyone had the same reaction and we had it as well that those those flash like graphics were disappointing. And then I got in person and I just didn't feel that way at all. No, it looked so much better in person. Especially, like, the animations of the toads themselves. Especially, like, and this was in the original, but the moves right. were, like, their hands and feet and themselves would kind of morph into different things, like animals or and it whatever. Was so reminiscent of Cuphead in those yeah. moments. I totally. really... I just, it was impressive. Yeah, 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 it just was like, cool. Like, I don't know, there's, so, there's a quality to the animation that looks nearly as good as Cuphead in a lot of those... Huh. Like, like, I was playing as the big brute okay. toad, I can't remember his name, uh, but he, like... Uh, wa- you were Pimple, I believe. Pimp- There's Pimple, Zitz, and Rash. I okay, yes, pimple. I was Pimple. Uh, so he like winds up to do his heavy attack, and then when he does it, he follows through and turns into a giant train and like really just wallops the guy. But that whole sequence where he's turning into a, ch- a train, it's it's just like he's like morphing fluidly, and at the same time, there's st- you still see the frames of animation where like they're clearly animating on the twos or something like like Cuphead. It's did they say if it's by hand too or? I don't. I don't know. We don't, they they yeah. aren't really talking. That's the thing. Like oh, we're the, the developers there. He's like, we're gonna hold off on yeah. talking about stuff. And I mean, it, it totally is like a classic kind of brawler style game. Yeah. At first, I felt slow because it was doing that thing that some of those older games do, where the people are knocked down. They're kind of on the ground, and they have like these invisibility like frames for a long time. Then I found out there's a move where you can actually like use your tongue 
to and lift them up. Well, you, yeah, I think you lifted them to you and I, like my, because your character was bigger. And my character would like go to them. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah. All right, that's but cool. Anyway, it's like it's like the, that's so that's kind of like the momentum of it is you knock them down, then you use that to kind of re-engage back at them real quickly. Right, and all that stuff is like um, it. It, it is a. It's one of those games. It's a beat 'em up. Right. Uh, yeah. For sure. It's not like doing anything crazy in that genre, except for like these really cool kind of morph attacks. Right. And it's like you, you maybe before this game was like before we saw it at this point, I, there was a part of me that thought maybe they're going to do something really wild and different and like turn it into a, like a triple A new like Battle Toads game. Yes. Fighting game. <laughs> like who knows? Like there's a, there's a possibility there. Um, so the fact that it was just this, it's like okay. I mean, I get that. Uh, but if it is going to be this, it seems like it's pretty good right. with and the potential to be actually great. And then we got to do the speeder bike section, which was thrilling. It was super fun, and it's cool because yeah. th- so it's from behind this time, so you can like right in the NES they're almost more infamous because they're just so hard because you can't really see them coming. And they like flash them right. But the, the cool thing here is that you can see them coming better, and there's three of you playing at the same time. And as long as like. Like, if two people die and the one person's still there, after a bit, the other two will respawn. Right, and so when someone dies, like, when both people die and there's one person going, you're just like, come on, just, all you have to do is just wait for us to get back, and then it's you're like, safe. stay alive for two more seconds. Yeah, just, <laughs> and it's like, it feels so long, and it's really not that it's long. It's really thrilling. But, yeah, and it's like, oh, I was on the edge of my seat, and it took us, I don't know, like, eight, nine It took deaths. us a bit, but we, we got it. Yeah, we got it through it, and it was like, and it felt great. It, it was, was like, a, it was a real it was accomplishment, simple, and, um... And, like, each of us had our moment where, like, we were the one going. Right, and we yeah, were, yeah, and we, and we, Yeah, and we got, like, we had the ball and carrying it across the line and got us far enough. And it felt really good, like, yeah, to have the spotlight. It, yeah. was, a, it was a really cool take on the spear bike thing. Like, right. to make it still difficult, but a bit more fair and, like, super exciting. And we're playing on the couch, and couch co-op is going to yeah. be more fun That's all the, the thing time. Too. Like, yeah, couch co-op is always a good time. Right, really. so if you, if you have, like, if that's a possibility for you, I think there's, this game really could work. We'll see when it comes out in February, right? Is this a 2020 February? I one? forget. I, 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 don't know. I don't remember. Yeah, because that teaser was way too <coughs> short to really find or to really discover all those things you were saying about the presentation, right? Like right. You can't, can't really sit down and look at it. Right. Yeah, and, and it's just like, I think uh, Matt Chandrine, who I think a lot of people in the chat know uh, from Area 5, he was talking on Twitter yesterday about how YouTube artifacts and Twitch artifacts, for that matter, um, oh, ru- ruin a lot yeah. of these presentations. And I'm like, I think you're being oversensitive because you deal with like 4K video all day, every day. Maybe 8K. I don't really know what his workflow is like. Uh, he deals with the best of the best on like the best hardware. Uh, I think he might have been onto something with some of these, with the, especially some of these CGI demos where it's just like they don't look good because of that grain, and then and then at the same time they are still CG, so you're like already tuning out. Yeah. Um, and then like Battletoads, it's just I think it made it look more flashed than what it is. Yeah. The animation is much closer to Cuphead than it is to Flash, which is... I mean, there is, like, that kind of cleanness to the line. Absolutely. No, I think people equate that, but sure. It has elements... It has more elements of Flash than than Cuphead, absolutely. But it is... I guess maybe my perception was so low of it that I feel like it's closer to Cuphead. It certainly didn't bother me when I saw it in person. Right, exactly. I I would never say anything if I saw it that way first. Yeah, exactly. Um, I, I only played a couple more things, Mike, but I think you played uh, quite a bit Yeah, more. a couple. I mean, you know, I'll touch on them, but uh, Age of Empires 2. Right, yeah. It's Age of Empires. It's fun. Right. I like that game. The uh, Forza Lego thing. Um, yeah, it was cool. It was, it was very much Forza of Legos. Like, there sure. wasn't it was anything different about it. But if Just, you crash a car, do you explode into Lego pieces? No, because, I mean, there's no, like... You know, the Force games don't have, like, explosion things. They're, they're very... Oh, yeah, they, they never damage your cars, right? It's one of those racing They damage, games. I think, oh. but it's not like... It's not like burnout or you're it's blowing up. I mean, I'll run into things they would turn into bricks. Real quick on this. I don't think Microsoft got enough credit for making fun of itself by bringing out the Lego car. Because, <laughs> you know, they bring out the car on stage <laughs> every yeah. year. It's and they're like... And they car. get it, and they was going to be like, oh, my God, what's a new car? <laughs> and, like, no one cares. And it's... down from the ceiling yeah, one year. Yeah, and it's just, it's just a, a, one of those cars made out of Lego. I'm like, that's actually pretty cool. I took my picture in that car. I was going to ask. Did you sit yeah. in it? Oh, I sat in oh, it. Was that, cool. was that, that guy was, like, kind of, like... It was like really I mean, it was on... We were, that's where the games were on that stage. Also, funny, because, like, the one person was like, oh, he was in the car. I'm like, yeah, I was in the car. Then, like, there's a guy by the car. It's like, good cop, bad cop. I was like, don't touch any of the Legos. I was like. It's so hard. The whole car's made out of Legos except the seat. So I'm like, he's like, he's like, grab the steering wheel and use that to get in. I'm like, oh my god. Wow. Yeah, <laughs> okay, grab man. Lego and you get mad at me. I'm like, dude, I'm trying. <laughs> man, I, I'm, I, I'm, I would imagine that it's enough work that if that guy had any part of doing that work, oh, probably, I get it. Yeah. Oof. Yeah, I would be. I would feel the same way. Uh, um, but yeah. The, what else? Oh, uh, Spirit Fair was the only other one. What do you think? It was really, I, like, that was another one that I felt a lot more. on the boat, right? Yeah, that also, like, just looks really good in person. Right. Uh, like, it's one of those things where at the stream at the time, maybe it was because, like, 
I want to be blown away by AAA stuff. I'm like, oh, what's of course. this artsy fartsy indie game? Right. But it's really pretty. It's super cool. I actually, like, like one of the people talking, like, really working at the station came up to talk to me, and I was like, oh, like, how many artists did you have? Like, oh, two. I'm the main one. So oh. I got to talk to her, but it's like, it's so impressive. Like, man, you, like, did most of this. It looks so good. There's all these, like, unique characters. And the concept of it is neat. It's, it, it, I almost got a bit of a Viva Pinata vibe. I don't know if that's super right, but, like, the idea that, like, you have all these people, and you kind of have to fill their conditions so that they ascend into, like, the after. Or get rid of their baggage, I guess. Kind of. Like, I didn't, I didn't actually get to play a whole time. Like, I played for five minutes before the show closed, but I watched it for a bit and was talking to, like, the developers for a bit. It's interesting. Fair enough. Um, I'm into it. A couple questions from chat. Uh, someone asked, "Is uh, did it feel hard? I think they were talking about Battletoads there. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, I mean... I think the I mean the beat 'em up not so much. The beat 'em up not yet. I, I that's probably gonna feel I like, didn't talk about like, I I got a super move at one point. Right. And, and it yeah, was you're really, the only one that did actually. Yeah. And it was really cool because like my character uh, he just yeah he literally summoned an arcade cabinet of like right, yeah. battle like the battles arcade game just like playing it and like as he was playing <coughs> it was dealing damage to the boss. So it was neat. And that felt really good. Um, I I I think that it's gonna have a chance to be like really hard. It's not gonna be as hard as like Battletoads. But no way, yes, right, no way. right. But I mean, but but like that, like the reason it was so thrilling on the bike is because that did feel hard. That bike thing, I imagine, with just one person, is probably gonna be very hard. Yes, <laughs> absolutely. Um, that's gonna be fun though, still I think. Um, and then uh, let's see. Oh, do we need it? Someone said asked about Battletoads, and like I don't know. If, do we really? Yeah. I mean, if I we, mean, you know, right? right? Do we need anything? Do we need anything? <laughs> right? Yeah, it's like. But uh, I know what you mean. Yes. Uh, uh, I think so. I think that it's like I don't know. I mean, I mean, Microsoft needs some things. Yeah, and it, they it, might need it. Right, and I think I mean Game Pass. <laughs> that's why I thought maybe it might be like one of these ones where it's like, oh, we're gonna get serious and make it a triple A or three D game. Uh, maybe they need those more to the point where I'm like they might even do that to Battletoads. Um, but it's like if you're gonna bring this series back, uh, yeah, just do this and it's fine. And I guess they could get by if it didn't exist, but it, it's good, I think. So yeah, sure, why not? I'm into it. Yeah. Um, all right. So, let's get to Ubisoft. No, I think there was uh, uh, xCloud. I played xCloud. Oh, sorry. I just touched it really quick. Uh, mm. It it worked. It it, it works. It oh, works really well. Yeah, yeah. It, was, it was so, so yeah. I'm always skeptical of these, like... Yeah, sure, of course, and you should be. Uh, and I still am, too, because it like, it's clearly going to be a controlled environment. But there was... Um, it's with the phone and a clip and a controller. I think they had the, basically the same setup at like XOE. Spencer had it, shown before. Yes. Or, yeah. Um, but I, I touched a bunch of different games really fast just to see what the lag lag felt like, and I, I didn't notice anything. Uh, it's hard to notice on a phone anyhow because I just that whole situation is so uncomfortable uh, in general that I don't it doesn't feel uh, equivalent to any other way I play games, so it's harder for me to notice any differences. Um, but all that said, I, I it's like I could tell I think the technology was working just as intended there um, in a way that like when I've heard people talk about Stadia. Uh, I think it, it does seem like it was working better in Stadia, although I haven't gone hands on hands on Stadia myself. But did they let you like swap di- to different games, or were you just no? Each game? phone was like set up with different games and stuff. Okay. I didn't see like the interface or anything yeah. like that. I, I I would imagine that that stuff's probably still not quite set up. <coughs> um, I feel like I might have played something else, but I, I, I don't know. I'll come back. Nothing big. Because yeah, you guys were there for like two hours. Two and a half. Yeah. yeah, that might have actually been. I think that's it. Yeah, I, I think that's it. Um, all right. So then, yeah. So Ubisoft. Um, this started you know a little bit later. We, um, we we covered this one remotely as well, and I, I don't know. Uh, I I liked it overall. What did they start with, Phil? They started with Watch Dogs, I believe. That's right. Mm-hmm. Watch Dogs. Well, they started with the Assassin's Creed Symphony. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> their, their commercial for their touring symphony. But I do like Assassin's Creed music, so that was a nice, See, I, nice I like, little treat. I like Assassin's Creed. That's not one of those series I really think of the music that much. Like, I think there's a few series that can get away with doing it's, a touring concert yeah. series. It's like oh, yeah. Zelda, Final Fantasy. I don't know if, if for me it's more Assassin's just Creed. I think the, the soundtrack for Assassin's Creed Two was, was yeah. just so good, and that's just that same theme I mean, song. It was, there are, there are a surprising good. number of hardcore Assassin's Creed fans. It was a good yeah. show. I mean, I like their little. If know. there's anything I learned from the last couple of V3s, there are people who go wild for just every game. <laughs> like, so I guess that it'll work fine. Yeah, um, but but, but it, uh, Jason made a good point in Slack, or maybe he did this on Twitter. There was no wood instruments and no wood, or there were no woodwinds or brass instruments, which isn't a symphony. Which is so it sounded kind of weak, I thought. Um, so it wasn't like this big emotional yeah. way to open it up. It felt weak. Mm-hmm. Have you guys ever been to any, any of those symphony shows? No. Final Fantasy. I went like, to the Lord of the Rings one yeah. for the movies years ago. Oh, I did that one. Yeah, it was really the one Howard Shore doing it actually. Yeah, sure. it was great. Yeah, yeah it was awesome. Um, yeah, so I, I like him. I I would like to go to more, but I just, I'm, I'm, I, you know 
I'm, most of the time I'd be going by myself, and at that point I'm like, ah, I don't know. Yeah, I've done the Zelda one twice and Final Fantasy one. So, anyways. Watch so, Dogs came out after that. Watch Dogs 3, Watch Dogs, I want to say Inquisition. That's not right. <laughs> Legion. Watch Dogs Legion. <laughs> um, Pretty close. I, uh, so you, I so, played this. So you played this, you looked at it. Dean also saw it, right? Yeah, he played it a bit. I, know, I, was, we were, I was asking these guys about it throughout this week, and I'm like, so you know, what's, what's the deal? How is it? Uh, and I think Dean was like, oh, Clint Hawkins directed it. And Mike's like, who's that? Turns out you had interviewed him and forgot. You didn't even recognize him when he was on stage. <laughs> you, you were ta- when you were talking about that 12 days, 12 minutes game or yes. whatever, and you said the name of the developer, I'm like, how the hell does he remember that? <laughs> so Clint Hawkins, Clint Hawkins, for people who don't know, directed uh, Far Cry 2. Then he, well, I think he went to Amazon, then to Valve, and now he's back at Ubisoft. And I don't think he's shipped a game in that intervening time. Oof. Um, so, but he's back at Ubisoft because they're like maybe the one publisher on earth that can handle a game that he can make. And I thought it looked fantastic, which, talking to you guys, I was not led to believe that. I mean, when you play it, it's, it's basically Watch Dogs 2 in okay. gameplay, which isn't bad. I mean, it's fine. I'm not going to get super excited about Watch Dogs 2 again. Fair, I, I mean, I, it just seems like uh, it seems like there's a lot of potential with switching characters. Is there not? You don't think so? I don't know. I, I think they're all... I, I think they're a bit more cookie cutter than the trailer leads you to believe. Yeah, like I played, like I the one person I possess in the game or possessed uh, took uh, invited. Basically, like even though they look exactly like that third character, the, the the woman at the end, like it was a very similar to that. It was, so it's it basically just like they've taken the skill tree that maybe one of the characters had in the previous game and split that up amongst multiple characters. No, it's not even that, because yeah. once you, rec- at least once, on, once I recruit the person, it then asks me, what is their specialty? What is, what, what are the one, three things is she? That, that is not how they portrayed it in the stream. I now. mean, in the game, I recruit her, they're like, all right, is she brawler, hacker, or uh, stealth? Which one is she? I, that's weird. It well, just that, feels well, that like... the first guy in the trailer not... was, was stealth, because he had that cloak, right? Yeah, but yeah. but you don't decide that, at least according to the way they showed it on stream today, but when he played it, they gave him the choice. So it's yeah, just over weird. here, it seems like I mean, they had it built it. was a weird E3 thing. I don't know. Hmm. But it was, it was, there were options. Also, I had to laugh because it was one of those classic like E three demo things. Yeah, the guy was like, "Oh, you can pick one of these strings," and you pick one. Like, "Oh, good choice." I'm like, "This is one I would have picked." Or you would have been like, "Oh, that was a dumbass choice, you idiot." I hate that. <laughs> that really actually, I always feel so pandering and uh, I know, like, yeah, like they're trying to butter us up. Like you're so good at this game. <laughs> oh, I've had that happen a couple of times. I'm just like, "Oh, that must be I suck." They're just trying to make me feel better. Right. But I, I mean, yeah, there's something. There were some cool things. One of the core things is that. There's all these drones flying around now, uh, and you can like hack those. But like, there's bigger ones, and you can hack it and lower it, and then jump on it, and then literally fly on the drone. Like, like you're playing Green Goblin, Green Goblin from, from Spider-Man. Okay. Yeah, exactly yeah. like did, Green Goblin Spider-Man. Uh, Christian wants to know: Did you play with the old lady? But also, no. did you play as the old lady? No, I didn't see. That's <laughs> <laughs> crazy. No, I didn't. I didn't touch the old lady <laughs> at all. But I mean, that's why, like, you know, London looks cool. Like, I'm not, I don't want, I don't mean to be down on it, but I'm not like. I just, I feel like um, thrilled about it. It almost looks like a cyberpunk London, just the way how bright. And yeah, yeah and so, someone cool. made a good point on Twitter that's like um, they solved the problem of guns in Watch Dogs, where it's like the previous ones felt like, why am I killing people? I'm just like this like fun hacker guy. Mm-hmm. Even in the first one, you're like, oh, I'm a hacker, but I'm like fighting for justice. Why am I murdering people? Yeah. And this one, they're like. <laughs> We're not going to take guns away. We're just going to make the world a nightmare hellscape to the point where it's like, it's okay to just that an old lady walks up to a cop and shoots him in the back of the head or whatever, <laughs> which happens in the trailer, which is actually pretty wild when you think about it. Um, but yeah, I, so for me, Clint Hawking uh, implies a lot. I remember, like, I like, late, man. I like Far Cry 2 okay. Um, I, I wasn't into it as, as much as some people. Mm-hmm. But I, I think it was like right when uh, Far Cry 5 came out. Someone did a comparison showing like, Here's what's possible in, like, Far Cry 2, and here's what's possible in Far Cry 5. And, like, you can, like, in Far Cry 2, you could, like, shoot a tree and, like, shoot the branches off, and it, like, would work right, right where you're shooting it. And, like, in Far Cry 5, it was just, like, the whole tree falls over. Like, clearly their, clearly their, their, um, their priorities have changed in that series over time. I'm, my, for me, when you bring Clint Hawking back and let him take over a game, it's, like, the potential for systems to be the focus, the potential for... Uh, it, like interactivity with the world to become the focus is it's like okay I'm gonna get my hopes up because he makes those kinds of games and I like those kinds of games in general and this this setting and this whole idea I'm like 
could there be a lot more to it? Could it? Is it going to be like yeah. a situation where I'm like, where, where, where like, it, I'm just like these little details. I'm yeah. saying, I'm not being that familiar with this guy. <coughs> and I wasn't getting any special sauce in it that suddenly made it feel that different. Right. And from, I think that that's just as possible. So, so, but, and I mean, I'm getting my hopes up. Well, and maybe, I mean, maybe not, I maybe it's not him, deserved. Well, I asked him like, how many like different profile, like how many different these characters are? How many voice actors do you guys have? Right. Play better? And he said like 20 and, but there's like voice modulation that comes sound different. And there's like some, like there, there should be more there, but you know, like how how many people you're going to recruit until you come across one that's a lot like the one you already or have. The, like yeah, going to be like, like back to back the same voice, right? Is it like fifty, is it thirty, is it five? <coughs> I don't know. Like how does the, the algorithm work? I guess right. Yeah. And there is still a little part like you don't have the main character and blah blah blah. I mean, it's not a problem. I don't. Know. Yeah, I feel. Like, I mean, I'm interested. And I want to play it. Yeah, I, I feel like that's actually not going to be as big of a problem. So I think people are going to work themselves up, and it's like. The story's probably going to be pretty good no matter what. Yeah, did they explain that role of Bagley? You know, he's kind of like the the main guy in your ear with, throughout all these characters. I mean, gosh, the, he was such, that was another thing. That's such a trope now. That that English guy with that specific Stephen Merchant esque voice. Oh, it does sound like Stephen Merchant. Anthem, yeah. all, Anthem had the same exact thing. Yes, and um, it was like quippy and yeah, it's, the, it's like that that trope. That is such a, a character type in video games. Is this one of these games where like the main character is you, like? Like, oh, oh like, you're, are you the, you're you the dead set commander? Is right. this, like, some Fire Emblem stuff? Yeah, but, like, even more than that, like, yeah. you're, like, the way you're interacting and hacking the world is, like, with the controller or whatever, uh, like, because you are just the character. Maybe, maybe. You know, because they didn't explain. Okay. All right. Um, I thought it looked good, but we'll have to see more. I think it was a good presentation, at the very least. Yeah, good demo. What do you, um, guys, what do you think about that, that show, Mythic Quest? Uh, yeah, so that came out right after Watch the <laughs> So I thought it was actually really, it was terrible the way that they came out and stopped the whole show to talk about this, and it didn't look that funny. And yeah, at first I was like, well, this will be interesting, and like their clip wasn't a very good joke. No, yeah, but that said, at the Square Enix thing, there were multiple creative directors that came out and had the exact same vibe that he yeah. had in that thing. <laughs> and I'm just like, man, I really hope that show is better than what it seemed like, because <laughs> that actually is like a really good premise. Just because... Uh, I can't remember what, I can't remember what like game it was. So far up his ass. Yeah, <laughs> but I, you know, I think it might have been the one I covered that um, uh, the uh, people could fly guy. I think the creative director in that video after they showed the trailer, he definitely had that like, you know, I'm the star here vibe, and it was just like, you know, that's fine, whatever. He makes he makes good games in the past. That he's still making good games, uh, but it was like I definitely was hoping that that uh, that whole show would have worked better for me. Uh, it was a terrible time to do it, though. I don't know. It just I don't know why Ubisoft. Yeah, like, wasn't it wasn't very clear what Ubisoft had to do. Ubisoft must be making like the 3D assets for their <laughs> fake game or something. Swimbig says, right, yeah, uh, "Mythic Ralph Quest, said... long wet, wet fart noise." <laughs> and I think that's that's probably right. right. Because all he said, I think, was just like we're collaborating with Ubisoft on this TV show, right, on Apple's premium subscription service. So you don't right. have to pay to watch the show, you know, yeah. along with other. Apple stuff. So. <laughs> I'm gonna pay because there's that show that's about like the moon landing or some shit. Yeah, I don't know. I, about the alternate uh, history yeah. one. Yeah, and I'm like, yes, so, that's right. Yeah. With the, the Soviet Union did it, and mm. yeah, I'm a sucker for that. So, okay, so what was up? What uh, was uh, Adventure Times coming to Brawlhalla. What's next? <laughs> <laughs> I, I just do I, you believe that Brawlhalla has over 25 million players total. I, not active players. Not active. I even I, I understand that. Touched it. Even still, 25 million sales. I mean, that's not a free-to-play game, right? I don't think so. I, not, I guess I don't know. They have not sold 25 million copies of that game. What's free? Is it free? Is it free? Yeah. There you go. Oh, so yes, then I do believe it. <laughs> All right, then. Well, I think a lot of people downloaded it and tried it once then. Yeah. And that's, I, that's a player. Yep. Yeah, I think I think you're absolutely right. I I would imagine it's like it's okay in terms of popularity. It's not like... You know, another game that has like 25, like 30 million players for them now is Rainbow Six Siege. Rainbow Six Siege, way more popular. That makes sense because you hear about Rainbow Six Siege way more. Right. Adventure Time's not even, that show's done. I, you know, was that even the same voice character, or voice actor? No, yeah, it is. I think he got old. Yeah. And yeah, but so he's just older. the, I mean, but his I voice. I think he sounded like that towards the end of the show. I know, I know he sounded a lot different towards the end of the show, but it sounded way different even here. I wasn't a big you know Adventure Time. I'm more honestly, of a Steven Universe guy myself. Honestly, but they, they probably <laughs> modulated it at, at more on the show, and they probably didn't have the same people doing the voice. I think they like, try to make it sound younger. I think, yeah. Well, they, you know, they probably just modulated it enough, and I think they probably don't have the same person doing the sound design here. Uh, it, he sounded tired, said Christian, and yeah. I mean, he's like 40 now, so yeah, he's tired. <laughs> Jesus. Um, yeah, I, I don't know. I, I didn't really they, care They're not that. care. They're not care. Yeah. What was next? Uh, we have Ghost Recon Breakpoint. Mm. When John Berthal came out, yeah, John, Bam Bam. Yeah, and John, you know what? Counter Reeves came out, and they're, and John Berthal was like, "What the fuck, guys? You're gonna make me go on stage too?" And I, I, no, I have. I'm bringing my da- goddamn dog, and they're like, "No, I'm bringing him." What, Mike? His hands yes. in the air. What, Mike? 
It was John Bernthal. Oh, fucking hell. He's in The Walking Dead. <laughs> he's in Wolf of Wall Street. He's the Punisher. He's the Punisher, yeah. Mostly he's known for uh, Walking Dead. Yeah. Uh, he's, a, he's a side character in Wolf of Wall Street. You haven't seen Wolf of Wall Street? Yeah. No, no, that's, that seems like too much of a that show. That has low morals Fuck it for hell. Mikey. The <laughs> point is that the people in the... Never mind, we don't have to talk about that. Um, Die Hard with a Vengeance is a great movie. Jeff got very mad at me because I... First off, I said I liked... Uh, live for your Die Hard more than Die Hard with a Vengeance. And then I just said I straight up don't like Die Hard. You said it was boring. I'll take Die Hard 2 over Die Hard with a Vengeance. Uh, I'll just, die harder. I can't take it, Mike, please. Well, let's move on then. We have so many days left together here. <laughs> handle the truth. Don't make me kill you. So, I don't. I didn't care about Breakpoint at all. I, I'm not that much into well, he, he didn't even reveal much, right? He just showed a new trailer, basically. Showed his doggy. Showed his dog. Yeah, I don't know. I, he had the do- dog. was the dog there? Uh, I think the dog's in the game. I think I don't know. Honestly, the, the dog was there because he had to compete with Keanu Reeves. Honestly, somehow. So it's like I'm bringing out a dog. So well, that backfired because everyone just the, that, I don't, the, the goodwill didn't go to the dog. I know, but no one. Just, just but no one was talking about how John Bernthal wasn't Keanu Reeves. Uh, they were talking about the dog. Talking about Bam Bam the dog. Right, and he probably loves his dog or whatever. So like that, yeah, he probably is, this is well, great. I hope he loves his dog. Was Bam Bam the cyberpunk Keanu Reeves cyberpunk moment of the Ubisoft show? Oh, absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> but what do we think of the game? I, I'm, I'm gonna. I, put, like I know you don't have any. I'm still, tuning it out. I'm still a little confused. Like, is it a story-driven campaign? Or like, yeah, it's probably what like they're all are. I don't know. Well, but like you know, Wildlands was always like you have a squad. And, yeah, but I mean, it's still the story bro- was real loose. It was actually pretty, still pretty story-based. Even you know, okay. all this but I think it's even more so this time. It's more focused. It seems like a breakpoint. Right, and I think yeah. it's going to be much more involved. Um, but I don't know. I, I, that game is. Um, I'm hearing good things from people who've played it. Uh, people th- they seem, to th- seem to think it's like going to be one of these games that comes along and could just be as popular as The Division 2 or Destiny. And um, that's exciting. I know yeah, I know you just don't care. What is I, it? Like, you, I don't know. I just, Ghost Recon never did anything for me. I don't know. Well, it's like Destiny. You but there's only be- been like one Ghost Recon like this, right? Just this the last one. No, I haven't played any. Okay, so you should... I, I, what the, the, these games start on the Xbox, right? Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. I totally, I but played, they're not like this. Yeah, I think I played that one. Okay, you started like Grawl or something? Like, yeah, Grawl, kind of I don't like Grawl. Well, Grawl was cool. Yeah, I remember Shu talking about how the grenades would make the tree sway, and that's like why they gave the game a 10 or something. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Yeah, uh, that was on the one-up show. Um, yeah, <laughs> I, I did not like those games as much back then. I thought Wildlands was a game I probably would have got into way more had I had friends playing when yeah. I started playing it. And they, there was no one playing it. So is it like Breakpoint more of like a Wildlands 1.5 then? It does feel like it might be a... It, it feels like Destiny 1 to Destiny 2. Yeah. It does feel like that. So um, I, I think it's... A lot it's, of the same core mechanics stuff. Right, but it's like... But with even more hooks, uh, more focus on what works, more focus on like the content updates and stuff like that. I thought I said I don't care about this. Why are we still talking? What was next? <laughs> yeah, you're right. Fair enough. I, I, mean, I, I don't have much well, there's to say. Well, there's yet another Tom Clancy. Tom game. Clancy's Elite Squad. Yes. Sam Fisher finally. Oh, this back. is the mobile it's one, the, right? Yeah. It's a mobile is RPG. It? I mean, there's so <coughs> many of these, like... I mean, there's one with freaking Disney characters. There's the one with the Star Wars characters. The one with the, you know, there's all these things. Like, let's make a mobile RPG. Right, and, and it was like, it's like their all-star game where it has... It's just all these Tom Clancy characters. It's all these military characters. Right, the, the Tom Clancy verse. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> the, the video game Tom Clancy verse. So Splinter, yeah, Splinter Cell Division. Do you guys ever walk into a grocery store and see a Tom Clancy book and feel the urge to pick it up? I do. I had a friend in high school, like, like high school, like... <laughs> We were like 16, who really liked the Tom Clancy books. I think it's just because I'm a dad now. I think yeah, it's half well, yeah. That's why I haven't felt the call. Yeah. I tried to read those um, Dirk Pitt books. You ever hear that? The hell is that? That's a made up name. That's Remember that movie Sahara? It, yes, I do. The author's Dirk. That's Dirk Pitt. Okay, all right. So these are a series Dirk of like Pitt. adventure. Apparently, it, it inspired Uncharted Pitt. Very similar thing. Okay, fair Modern enough. Modern. Oh, which you tried and didn't work for you? Well, the problem is like the original books were in the 70s, so there's a lot of like. Oh, so it's kind of it's kind of thought a of like, racist, a little sexist. <laughs> more so, yeah, the sexism more so than anything. A lot of internal dialogue about how Dirk Pitt doesn't value women very much beyond <laughs> the way he has sex with them. And it's like Jesus. Yeah, it's like yeah, it's, yeah. You get to those. But like, then it's like yeah, it's like Indiana Jones. Like they have the sex scene, like it cuts away. Like here's such a lingering act that I don't like. <laughs> hear Indiana Jones thinking a lot about how right. he doesn't really care about women. Yeah. Oh, she's just a hole for me. Is that what it was like? Or. <laughs> Oh my god, Not really? Not that bad. <laughs> <laughs> Shit, okay, alright. There don't... was not much respect. Yeah, no, yeah. The, the 70s, yeah. Um, yeah, I don't know. I actually... So anyways, yeah, this is a thing. Yes, and I, I guess I don't know. I, I'm into Ghost Recon, um, yeah. but I don't know. In case you guys couldn't tell, we're at the middle portion of the show. Next up was Dance, Just Dance 2020. The, the, the obligatory Just Dance the best, the best thing about this is that it's coming to Wii. 
Yes, they're coming to we. I, so actually, I really love that Blackpink song, that, that K-pop song, uh, "Murder Love" or whatever it is. Has there, has there ever been a time where a game came out on like one generation, not the next generation, and then the one after that? <laughs> no, probably not. I would say like Madden would be the closest. Right, it's not on Wii. But Madden like didn't come out for like PlayStation and PlayStation Three. It came out for PlayStation Two yeah, and Wii. It's right? not on Wii U, but it's, it's on bad. Wii and Switch. That is. Why? I can't believe that there are enough people who still have Wii and are playing this game. No, but I, no it but is absolutely, it point, is right? absolutely like, the Just Dance machine for so many people, I bet. I bet there's people who love these wow. games. And, like, here's the thing. My, my, my wife is a first grade teacher. Her, her students love Just Dance. When she needs to, like, get them to, like, get, get some energy out or if they get a reward, they want her to put on Just Dance videos. And they don't use the controls or anything. They just watch them on YouTube. I guess. And just do them along. That's what I say, because you don't really need a controller. Right. right. It doesn't track anything. You don't need to be, it doesn't end up, you don't need a new hardware for it. You yeah. really shouldn't. So you just don't, I, I bet they're for making For that money. audience, is Just Dance 2019 not enough? I, I think they love. I think that I think they want to have guess, modern songs. I guess if, I, if I you're, guess music, if you're right. serious about like if you're a music fan, absolutely, yeah. I mean, like think about how, how about how many of those commercials you saw for now. That's what I call music. It's the same yeah. audience, same exact audience. Fair enough. You know, I always wonder. It's like, wouldn't it be just cheaper for Ubisoft just to do like Just Dance Infinite and just sell as a no, platform? No, because they want to make that that regular sixty dollars yeah, per like each, copy. And they can count on it each quarter. It's funny, for a while, people used to be mad when the Just Dance section would happen, and now, now it's like, like it's, oh, here, yeah, no I don't know. At this point, I'm like, this is like a, it's like such a breath of fresh air in the middle See, of the thing. I don't like it, but I don't. <laughs> I, it. Yeah, I like it. I liked it this year. I think for the first time ever, I really liked for it. I'm like, first time. Uh, you know, I, 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 I'm maybe more into music. Now I like dancing. I like watching dancing. It's fun. So it was cool to watch. And there was a panda. There's always a fun animal yeah. of some sort. There was always a panda. Um, for for honor, got some DLC. Nothing. Yeah, I thought that trailer was pretty cool looking, but I'm never gonna play for honor. I thought it was a mode, but apparently it's just a limited time event. God, I, I don't yeah. know. I honestly don't know. The panda <laughs> uh, is great. I just love the panda, says Christian. There you go. Rainbow Six Quarantine. So this is. A that's my, another thing. That Wallace like, says mine's still connected to Wii, and he plays a virtual <laughs> console console all the time. Yeah. I, that, that's a fair use of the Wii because yeah. the Wii U version of that was actually really bad. Yeah, we had a lot. Don't of stuff okay. update to the Wii U. I guess you wouldn't now. But it did say matters. it was limited time according to Wallace. Yeah. Okay. Um, Rainbow Six Quarantine is a new Rainbow Six game. It's not like competing with Siege, right? Because it is a, very. It's going for a different audience. Cooperative. So it's it's the PVE for, instead of PVP. But even that developer is saying we're gonna do for PVE what. Rainbow Six Siege did for PvP. I don't. I don't. Kind of like a, be I don't. Be unpopular for first and then rebound. <laughs> yeah, I I, that's so. honestly that's the only thing I think it could mean. I don't know what that means. I uh, maybe it means like become this monster hit. I, guess, I mean, maybe but. it means it's gonna have like seasons and characters and stuff. I look. look I, there was the um, Rainbow Six Siege outbreak mode, which was a three-player that was the alien one, right? cooperative, like alien zombie sorts of yeah, things. Yeah, I did sure. like that. And it worked really well. I think it was very popular. And they're like, here it is. Here's our spinoff. And I, I can imagine Ubisoft continuing to do this where they test modes in Siege, by far their, by far their most reliable like uh, live service game. Mm. And if it's something like seems that like if the numbers say people are really into this idea, that's the next game. And they go they'll find they'll find the, 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 the Tom Clancy brand where it works and just keep doing that for, for years now. So this is the first example of that. We'll see how well it works. Um, I, I don't know. I, I feel like it might be better if they had called it something else to like really just branch it off even more from Rainbow Six. But at the unless same they, time, unless I, they still keep that tactical gameplay where like you want to use these little tools, and right? Stuff here. I, I, you know, the thing is, is like they want to bring. I'm sure they're going to want to bring in Rainbow Six characters over time, and like over yeah. time, they're like, oh, now here's finally this character that you left from that game, and here mm -hmm. uh, we'll see. I, it, I don't know. I, I'm like half excited about this, half like I might not play it. I thought it was going to be like Zombie Two. Like zombie. With I, when it first, when they're sure, <laughs> yeah. yeah, that's exactly what I thought when I saw it, and it was not. Um, and I, I guess it's telling that they wouldn't make that, and they would make the outbreak standalone mode instead. Or maybe uh, that's just because the Rainbow Six name just has more, <laughs> and just because it's a live service game. Yeah. So yeah, it's incredible when you think about how many games Ubisoft showed are Tom Clancy games. Yeah. 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 Division Two was next. Speaking of which, Division Two was well, just downloadable content. I think a lot of this we knew about, maybe. I think some of the details not, but it's like. There's like three episodes of content coming out the rest of this year. The episode one is uh, like you're going a bit outside the city. There's something to do with the National Zoo. It's like new environments, new right. yeah. uh, I don't know. I forget what two was. Something. I think three was the Pentagon like raid is mm. going to happen. Or three was like next year. That's happening. I don't think the, the, stuff. the Tom Clancy estate, someone's wondering how much money they're getting. I think <laughs> zero now. Really? I think, I think, they, really? I, think Ubisoft, it off? I think Ubisoft straight up owns Tom Clancy. 
And Stop Patrick's son brand. still manages the other parts of the business, I guess, right? Yeah, but I think I think Ubisoft full out owns the whole brand though at this point. I, I think oh, when you like there's a book in the store, it's oh, like but, Ubisoft is getting money. Really? Oh, I, don't I, know. I know they bought, they might have just bought it for video games. My understanding was they bought the Tom Clancy name whole like wholesale. Hmm, right. um, yeah. Um, yeah, so, uh, I, I, what was, I guess, the Division 2, was there anything else from that, or was it just kind of like, uh, this is the roadmap, continuing uh, to be the roadmap? So it's coming out in July. Yeah, I like Division 2. Yeah, there's another month, yeah, it seems I like mean, it's, it's, it's so, it's so hard to make these live service games that, ex- like, they, they feel obligated to show them, but, like, how exciting can it be? Like, yeah, there's, you know, more <coughs> this things is, coming. This is why E3, I think a lot of people are like, this is why E3 feels like it's becoming more relevant. It's because more of these games exist, and these games do nothing at E3. They just people do not care about them. Didn't hear about them here. The, the audiences are they are very passionate, but they're not as broad. Right. And and it's not like those things are served better by their own dedicated streams. Right. Like, I mean, the people who like the vision like the vision. It's, you're not gonna like. It's, it's kind of weird because you're talking about such a larger audience mm-hmm. than that. A lot of people don't play the vision. If if you're not playing the vision now, it's not like you're gonna suddenly mm-hmm. be in for episode three of the DLC roadmap. Okay, I think Jeff was right. So there's this. New story from 2008, where Ubisoft announced that it acquired all IP rights to the name Tom Clancy from the author. This includes uh, so for one big in video game and related products like books, movies, merchandising. Wow. Now, I, th- I thought that was right, but I'm like, I was, I actually picked up a, a Tom Clancy book in the store the other day, looking for the Ubisoft copyright in there. <laughs> yeah, I couldn't find it, so I wasn't sure. So is Ubisoft making money from like the new Jack Ryan? Show? Yeah, I think that, so. That, that'd be a good question. I don't know. I mean, but that's what it says. I mean, it says everything related to that. So, so I think so. So next, uh, the Ubisoft Play, Ubisoft Plus, you play Plus. Ubisoft has a subscription service too. How many? I mean, I think it's one thing when like Microsoft and Sony does this. I don't know if I need all the third party people to have their own one of these. Can't they kind of just get on board with like the other people a little? It bit? does feel very much like um, like when you go into to a subscription video service that you already have, and it's like, do you want to like subscribe to this other thing within there? Right. So they're like, it's going to come to Stadia. It's yeah, it's fifteen dollars a month. Isn't like the ultimate Game Pass fifteen dollars a month? So yeah, look, it, it does feel like it's it is um, the opposite of Disney's movies and, and TV Disney shows. Plus. Disney it's Plus, Plus. Where, where it's like seven bucks a month, right? Yeah, um, it's pretty cheap. It's like half the price of anything else. It, like it's half the price of like the the top end of anything else. Um, and you get everything with, for seven bucks, and then, and then so when Ubisoft comes along and it's like we're gonna do fifteen bucks, which is like equivalent to like Microsoft's everything. Yeah. Um, it seems like a lot, but also it does sound like it's gonna have a ton of games in there. It's like more than a hundred games, and I think if they're all Ubisoft games, it's like that's. I mean, is, is it all Ubisoft? Or is it, do they have partners that they're I working with, like I EA did, or? Oh, I like Ubisoft games. I don't know if I like them so much that I need constant access to all their games. I think I'm good right. <laughs> getting the one or two. But do you games. do you subscribe to EA Access or, or no, no. So, okay? So I lot, mean, also I'm a game journalist. I get a lot of games. Right, right. Yeah. A lot of people do, and they. I mean, I remember like there was a point where EA Access where people were like, "This is the best deal in gaming," and then, yeah. and then Xbox Game Pass came along. And I like, mean, I, th- I think uh, I <coughs> imagine if I like wasn't a game journalist, Xbox Game Pass would be the only one I would really see a lot of value. In. Right. So, but uh, I. I like EA Access. I don't know, like, but I, then again, EA Access is like fifty bucks a year. I think it's like yeah. thirty bucks a year. Actually, it's, pretty it's cool. very affordable. Ubisoft is not that, um, and you get like early access to their games and, and like all their first run games come to there right away. So I see why it's like it is like so expensive. EA Access or it, no, like EA Access yeah. Premier, which is yeah. like fifteen bucks a month. So right. it's right. It's the same as that. They just don't have a cheap option. Mm. So, uh, Anything else on that? It just feels no. a little too little too late. Yeah, you know, I, I, who's I, gonna want that? I mean, it feels like they're doing this just in case it works, and yeah. and, and they're not gonna be afraid to be like it. Do, it didn't work, and now look, we're part of like we're much more partnered with uh, with Game Pass. They talk about some kind of a streaming thing too. I mean, they just said they're gonna be working with Stadia. That was, right. But that's the. Everyone, I thought I'm like, gonna. I, I, in my <laughs> mind, everybody talked about that. That's I'm, I'm gonna grab a water. Do you want to need a drink? Why don't you guys go to the next topic while I'm doing that? Roller champions. Right. I could talk about that. Yeah, you, is, you, you, you guys need anything? Game. No, no okay. leave me alone. <laughs> so, <laughs> what is roller champions? Roller champions like? is very much roller derby, Rocket League kind of a thing. Uh, like it, like I said Rocket League because it, it's that three versus three kind of like arena competitive sport video game thing. That's a bit more high speed. It's like a it's like roller derby in that the, the object is to grab a ball, and then there, there, there's a track that you're on, and you have to kind of get yours. Once you have the ball, you have to get to the start position of the track. It's a circular track. And then you have to like do a loop, like or just short of it, because like at the end of the loop is 
a hoop. And this is confusing already. Once you do Basketball. a loop, yeah. Once you do a loop, you can throw the ball in and get a point. If you do two loops, keep in mind if you're if the ball is intercepted from you, it, it resets. Okay. If you can do two loops, Under, it, interrupted. Yeah. Or you can pass it to a teammate or something. Okay. Or you can even like lose possession and a teammate can pick up. You do two, that's three points. You do three, that's five. Five five points is when the game ends. That or time limit. So you do if you manage to do three loops, this game over. That's not gonna happen. But it is that's kind of the conceit here. It's three versus three. So I mean that honestly, I think those are the rules of roller derby. Yeah, I'm not that familiar with roller derby. So, so. I think that might be why they got mad at you when you compared it to Rocket League because <laughs> roller, be roller derby predates this Rocket League. To be clear, it, there's. Two teams, they're the blue and orange. Fair enough. It's very bright. Near, it looks a lot like Rocket Okay. I, I, I don't doubt. You're right. It is and definitely, they get mad at me. It, they definitely are trying to ape the feeling of it, but... I don't think this game exists without Rocket League being a thing, is what I'm saying. That's fair. That, you know what? You're right. That's fair. But, at the same time, I get why they're like, no, it's this thing is like from forever ago, so it's like... Maybe they, it's okay. That they, it's fair that you think that, and it's fair that they're a little butthurt about it. I mean, look, soccer is older than... Roller derby, that's not okay, the yeah. point, you know? Yeah. Right. Either way, yeah, I, I don't know. I, I don't is... know, it's cool, I liked it, it was fun. I'm into you, it. You had a good time? Yeah, I'm actually, I enjoyed it quite a bit. I'm not I'm not trying to be down on it. I, I, I just, I, I don't know how it works as a video game. It seems like, uh, what does it mean to just intercept it? Like, you just run into him and, like, you try tackle. to hit the ball? There's a tackle button. And how does that feel? It feels good. Okay. Because, you know, there's so much of the momentum is, like, because the whole track is banked, right? Like a half pipe. And you can push a one button where you kind of scooch in, you kind of get a speed boost. Right. So a lot of it is kind of being smart about the way you're zigzagging, because you don't want to just go straight down. Right. So you're kind of like trying to get the best momentum and cutting the corners. And sometimes like you want to throw the ball ahead and maybe even bounce it um, like kind of past the like one corner mm -hmm. and hope that your teammate grabs it. It was pretty, it's, it's pretty hard to score eight points. Right. So it's not like, oh, you know, you get three points, blah, blah, blah. It was, I liked it. I thought it was fun. Cool. Yeah. There's potential there. It's free to play. Yes. Okay. Have you guys ever seen Rollerball, the movies? Either no, one? I know it's heard of a thing. But... Dean Cain or the uh, the other one, Sh Sean Conn. Nah, that's his son. James Conn. James Conn, uh, yeah. Both of them are good, but uh, the one's good because it's bad, and the one's good because it's a really good uh, sci-fi like sort of yeah. take on the whole thing. Um, I don't know. What, what else? Well, we're at the last game, which was Gods and remember. Monsters. That's right. Yeah. Man. Really? So they went from that to God? Huh. Okay. Yeah. So, the, right. so this is like they were like, "Hey, this is the latest from the Assassin's Creed team." Uh, it's Odyssey team specifically. Odyssey team. Okay, it's something completely new. Uh, so yeah, that makes sense. And the Odyssey team is like, "Oh, what we discovered is we felt hamstrung by the historical setting. We want to do stuff that is much more like fantastic myth and mytho mythological." Yeah. And then they showed a game that looks like Zelda meets Assassin's Creed. Right. It's nice to see a Ubisoft game that doesn't look like most Ubisoft games. Right, it looks like Zelda. Uh, and, it looks a bit more like And that. then, like, a, a sort of mythological beast came out and, like, was attacking. It had, like, wings. And it it seems like this is going to be, the, be, like, the first big game that's going to be a Breath of the Wild-like. Yeah. And we kind probably. of maybe thought those um, were going to come. On that scale, you think? Oh, yeah. Yeah, it does seem like that. Uh, and it, I mean, I mean, on terms of scale. Because Dean, Dean saw it, right? But you didn't. Did Dean see it? I don't I thought, know. I thought he saw it. Or did I mean, he just I don't do think, an interview? I don't think any, maybe the interview. I don't think anybody saw it unless... He got some special things. I mean, he's a judge, so maybe yeah. they did. Like, I mean, I was at judges week. Yeah, but I mean, maybe they they do have stuff here where they're like, finally, like, okay, you can maybe. touch it for a second, so you can actually maybe. vote on I, it. I don't even think that to be honest. Maybe he did. Um, either way, I'm like, I like the the, the concept is good. Uh, yeah, so, there wasn't that much show. Right? No, it was very it was a very short. I like teaser. the idea of it. But that's what, yeah, uh, the idea of a Zelda game made by the Assassin's Creed team is like that's a lot of stuff that I think could work well together. Um, so I'm, I'm looking forward to it. Um, well, that was it for you. That was so. it. They ended pretty abruptly after that. Yeah, it was like right after the it's trailer. Kind of, it's kind of, it's kind of hard to. It's it's cool to end on a big new game, but it's kind of hard when. And also, it's like sounds terrible when you say it when it's not tied to like some new franchise or something for people to get excited about. What's that tied to some like old franchise? Right. Right. I mean, they basically had to tie it to the fact that it was the Assassin's Creed Odyssey. Team. Like right. if it ended on Splinter Cell, that would have been like a much bigger right. Game. That would have been a better E3 right. show. So it seems like that game's not even in development. No, though, at so. all. Well, the, despite the, the the joke right, right. from a couple of months ago, or right. maybe a month ago. Uh, yeah, I, mean, I bet that game was like in and out development. In and out of development a lot, and it's it's a bummer. I was kind of I was hoping for a new one, but you know it's not a game as a service game, so it's not going to ever be a priority for them unless they maybe maybe if they do um, uh, well, spies like they versus mercs or the like Wildlands. Right? They had that limited time Sam Fisher. Was it mode or he was like a character? Yeah, there? he was he was in Wildlands for a little bit. Yes, yeah. yeah. There's a mode and like 
you could work with him, I think, or he was maybe just setting you up. And then that's the mood where he was like, "What happened to the guy with the bandana?" We're like, "He's done." Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm the only one, and it was <laughs> heart wrenching because he's just misses the only other man that ever understood him, Solidus Snake. Solidus. I don't know if that's right. So, no, it's not. I think Solidus Snake, the idiot. <laughs> all Hideo Kojima writing is, is just garbage, Solid and it too. doesn't matter. Solidus was the it third doesn't. Clone. It is filth. It's disgusting. It's. It's not. He's George Sears, the president of the United States. All right. What, and now you're just being... <laughs> okay, so what happened after Ubisoft? Did we, George I, Sears. <laughs> did, it, did they still make video games after this? Or is this it? Or, what? Yes. What do you mean? We, we, had a short, we had a short break. Like, so well, what do you guys think of Ubisoft? They're real quick. I know. Oh, we're, okay, yeah. I know it's all right. I guess, yeah. It's kind of what we expected. We already knew about Watch Dogs Legion because yeah. of the... Yeah, the I thought it was fine. Watch Dogs it was a good thing to open on. I'm sure they would have preferred that was more of a surprise, but... 2019, what are you gonna do? Yeah, I, I'm just, I'm, I think I'm gonna play with gaming where I'm like, I don't, a lot of AAA games are gonna come out and I'm not gonna like them. So I'm like, I don't need to be like, not every huge announcement needs to be that. Uh, that Zelda thing was like, that's a big surprise for me. I think that's gonna be good. And like, the Just Dance thing was fun to watch. I don't care if I'm never gonna play it. Um, this is a good show. It was fine. It was fine. Yeah, but I mean, Ubisoft had some bad shows before. To be fair, and this was not. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah I mean, well, there was no Mr. Caffeine. No, no Mr. Yeah. Caffeine. But it was also the first in a while that Eve's didn't have this big inspiration. Was there even a host speech? I no, because they should have Aisha Tyler. Right. 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 Yeah. Yeah. There's no host. Fan. I'm not a big fan of the hosts. It was just like here's the video. And then right. Yeah. The I, I, I think it worked way better without hosts. I like Aisha Tyler, right. but I don't like necessarily like her at E3. You know, it's just. I don't know, it breaks the flow. It's the, not, I mean, the Watch Dogs presentation was a lot better than anything I might have thought because it was a lot of gameplay. Like, you know, more. I remember that old lady from the Watch Dogs 3 thing, Helen, more funny. than I remember, like, whatever the hell they showed. For yes, Christian. War yes, he is. <laughs> what? Is Mike the Dan Reichert of this podcast? Mike. You're, you're so dangerously t- similar to Dan. <laughs> tell, us, tell us what foods you won't eat. Oh, no. <laughs> no, everyone's going to be making fun of <laughs> Uh, yes, he is, though. Um, <laughs> that's really funny. I guess I haven't really thought about it like that. Um, uh, yeah, so, I, yeah, Ubisoft was this fine. Was fine. I mean, I, if you're expecting much more from Ubisoft than that, I think you're expecting... And they already said, like, low. stuff like their Pirates game wouldn't be there because they delayed it. It's yeah, that's, you know, it's common. You know, it's going to be a Pirates game. It's going to be cool. Mule Bob, that's a good thing. How many references are there going to be to Sam Fisher before he gets a new well, game? We got... Oh, yeah, there's least, been, like, two. Least, least more, right? more, or less references, more or less references to Terminator. Yeah, no, oh, so we less forgot about that. that. We, didn't, we didn't mention the Terminator. That was bizarre. They what was he, what the I honestly don't even remember what that has to do with anything. Was that for Breakpoint? Maybe it was one of the Clancy games. I Fuck. think it was Breakpoint. I don't know. It's funny because they literally already did it for Gears, yes. Gears Five. Yeah. I, I know I, I made like a slut joke last time, but Terminator is a was it for Terminator as well? Maybe it was. The Terminator is like the a slutty brand or whatever. Oh, it's a total slut brand. Yeah, yeah. but it's I don't think came up in this one. We just saw the T one thousand red eyes and the music. Just the music, yeah. Which yeah. well, you're complaining yeah. they didn't play the music at the other one, right? And they so. played it here, and it was. I, Works for me here. I like it because of the music. Um, <laughs> although it felt like oh, it felt like a new arrangement that wasn't as good. So <laughs> wow, yeah, edgy. I'm very yeah. I'm I'm gonna like so, make it, yeah. I don't know. But we want to talk about Square Enix and then talk about the rest of them. Yes. So Square Enix opened with the Final Fantasy VII thing. I think a lot of people were surprised by just how good this actually looks because it looks pretty top notch. Right. And they, they kind of went into how the combat works, which, which I, I think we, everyone needed to hear. I think it made people people feel a lot better where. It's not like suddenly God of War, some like combo based combat. Like you have like an attack button, but you're almost doing that more so to build up your ATB bar. The fact that they even call it the ATB right. bar, I think it's kind of like it's, it, nice. it, it, it's a relief for a lot of people. Right. And the thing is, like you have so you have so many ATB bar segments. It's kind of Final Fantasy 13 ish to be honest. Yeah, Mule Bob says it's, it looks like Final Fantasy 15 on steroids. It's like mm. it's like Final Fantasy 15 meets 13 a little bit. Too right. Much. And it's like, but it's and it's all sort of paying homage to what Seven already was. Right. And it's like it's a really good way and to do it. The only thing of it is like instead of like just waiting for your ATB bar to fill up, you have to like do this to fill it up. And then once it's filled up, then you can do the. Like, all the other actions. Use an it's, item. It slows down spell. time to the point where it's, like, it feels... Well, it's interesting because, like, you can either you can either make it so that you stop the time and pick what you want, or you could do shortcuts. So okay. it's real time. So you could just say, well, if I hold down what L2 or triangle, that's fire. Okay. Or you can that's pause it and, like, really options. think about it. That's yeah. cool. And oh. that's, like, you know, there's a, there's a lot of... Uh, I mean, I think... Like it's, team it's not just like that. mindless hack and slash. No, it's yeah, not. But, but people that want it to be like faster and like continue to make it feel like an action game have that option. Right. And then people that want to choose from a menu get that as well. I mean, the so biggest difference is going to be that I assume you like actually have to dodge enemy attacks and stuff, not just like 
<laughs> I will be stat curious. yourself out for it. Did they say that, or, or I'll be curious I mean, if that actually works that way? Because yes, fifteen yeah. doesn't, right? Or is no, it, fifteen it, does. It does. does. Okay. Well, what did I play that doesn't like matter at all? I guess it was Dragon Quest. It was Dragon Quest Eleven. Yeah, or whatever. Dragon, well, Dragon Quest was like real pure turn based. Yeah, but you can move around, but it doesn't matter. Yeah, yeah like, Dragon Quest Eleven. Yeah. The latest one. Yeah, okay. I guess I did. I thought I played a little bit of it. Yeah, the latest. Yeah, one, you run around. You, you run around, but it doesn't matter where, what you do. So you wait for your turn. Yeah, just wait for. It, it, yeah, like, you're not dodging anything, even nope. as you're moving around. You, the distance doesn't and matter. Doesn't. Yeah, no, the enemies will still jump it, and hit you. It doesn't matter. Yeah. yeah, so it's just like it's just for the look of it. I really thought Dragon Quest Eleven was a straight up people standing in two lines looking at each other. I know. If, sure. Whatever the latest one is, if it's I That's don't know. Eleven. If it's, then yeah. All right, then. Yeah. I haven't played that much. I thought I played it at E3 like. Actually, last year, so that's all I played of that. Well, one. maybe it changed. Yeah. No, I doubt that. Um. Uh. So yeah, I mean, it looks really good. My what the point is, Barrett's voice is a little like yep, it's a little dated. Bit, uh, it's not as bad as the original dialogue, at least from that the video they showed. But it, 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 it feels it's, very stereotyped. It feels very Robert Downey Jr. in Tropic Thunder. Yeah. <laughs> wow. Yes, yeah, it does feel that way. It it's, sounds. So it feels fun. like the kind of thing that Japan, Japanese people wouldn't necessarily notice as a problem. Right, and it's it's interesting because like Cloud actually sounds pretty good. Yeah. And stuff. Um, it's okay. so funny because they finally showed Tifa after a while. Right. Like, the whole thing was like, why aren't you showing Tifa? Like, what's the conspiracy? And then they show Tifa, everyone freaks out. And that's why they didn't show Tifa right until away. Until E3, so it would yeah. have a big pop at E3 and it worked. They know. Like, yeah. They're going to be smart about that for all this well, So, what do you think? Because they mentioned that this is the first part of the remake project. So, it's interesting because they're not like calling it episode yeah, one. Yeah, it's not episode, They didn't say the word episode at all. No, and they're well. They said like yeah, they said it's a, they called it a standalone game. They said that yeah, it's just taking a place through the Midgard section, and right. but it's actually so expanded and so big that it is a full. Also, game. Did they confirmed it's just the Midgard. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it actually, I thought I saw parts that looked like it might be up to when you go to like that first Marsh, town. Maybe. Yeah, that place where the set right. But I bet I bet a lot maybe. of the expanded stuff is Midgard. Right. I think that's where probably the bulk of it is. Because I mean, it makes sense because. <laughs> what you do? Ten next? hours of the original Final Fantasy VII took place in Midgard. A good, a good yeah, like about that. that. Yeah. But that's the thing. Like, this can't be. I don't know if this could be that long. Like, you you would expect it to at least be thirty hours long. I mean, this is it definitely. It's they're getting into the semantics. They're getting into branding here. The reason they want to call it a full game is because it's going to cost sixty dollars. Right. Yeah. It comes on two Blu-ray. You can't discs. call it episode one. Two right. Blu-ray discs. I yeah. I just you, it can't come out and only be ten hours long. It's hard yeah, to imagine. Well, and yes, but at the same time, the reason it's two Blu-ray discs is because that's going to be 4K video, the and, and they're going to fill it yeah. up with a ton of video, and it's not, like, it, I, th I think, I don't know, I think it's a little bit of a, maybe I don't, I could be wrong about that, but, that's my guess, and I think that's misrepresenting necessarily what people are going to get. Yeah, yeah. But, but, yeah, they just, they want to charge 60 bucks for what, what is, what was originally episode one. Right. Um. And yeah, you couldn't do that if it was episode one. It would have been thirty bucks, and that's hard to do. So. Yeah, I mean, you have to give them credit. Like you know, they, it, it looks a lot like you know the game's they're coming out. They're they're, yeah. they're going hard on this. Yeah, and they're, it not, looks, they're not holding much back. I think what impressed me most about the graphics is that it looks like you know Advent Children, but in real time, yeah. right? It's, just it's like, two Blu-rays because uh, Cloud's story is too big. <laughs> Fuck. That's too like. Especially like Cloud's portrayal in like Advent Children and all the other stuff, like he suddenly got so dour and moody, and it wasn't like how he was in the game. Right. It doesn't feel like that bad in this at all. Right. And at the same time, it's like it doesn't feel like this is a world where a lot of the silly stuff could happen. So I, like I, the cross-dressing Cloud. Or, it yeah, is, like, that is the, yeah, it is kind of interesting. Or the snowboarding even. Like, oh, they better do snowboarding. I, I want. I want to see that. We'll, we'll see. <laughs> I, 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 that's the thing. Like we won't have Golden Saucer in this one. So. Oh, but yeah. That's it. Like that's the thing. Once you get there, they need to like add in. Like back then, I feel like adding that whole robust chocobo mini game, like that was one thing. Like, like the breeding now, stuff, yeah. well, breeding and racing and like all that stuff. Right, but the, all that stuff makes sense when you're working with like those really small character but assets. That's, that's my thing. Like, what's next? It's one thing that make this separate because you don't have to really deal with the world map. Once you leave Midgard, then you have the world map, and it's kind of weird to like block some of that off. Or well, I, I think, it, like I think it, they have to like restructure it. There maybe. won't even be a world map, right? If you're just stuck in Midgard and this. Well, not on this one. But I'm saying like the next one. What do you do? Because what if there's a two and a three? Then how, like, like maybe it's just it maybe like, it's this one and yeah. then the next one's the rest of the game. I don't know. What's this a prologue almost? You think? Not prologue. Oh. I think I mean there's so much Midgard. Maybe they're expanding it so much. Like Midgard's now half of the game literally. I don't know. Oh, you mean like it's equivalent like, it's size a change to like the rest if you open? Okay. Um, well, they have to. Have, they must have. They, there has to be something added. If no, 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 I don't mean that. I just mean like you're saying like when you have the whole world map. Like it's gonna be, it's gonna be much bigger than what Midgard used to be. And no. you're saying that maybe they blew up Midgard so that it is equivalent to like what the whole world. Was. I, what I'm saying is, I feel like the next thing has to just be the rest of the game because you can't have a part two, which is like what half the world map. 
Then part three, where like you go to the other half of the world map. But what, but if, what if you go back to? What if it's restructured part? to the point where it's much more linear? Yeah, can, can you go back uh, to Midgard? That that people are gonna start. Okay. Being upset like, would about. you be able to go back to Midgard in part well, two? I don't think you can go back. You couldn't go back to Midgard anyways. There's a story reason, right? Yeah. The, well, you were like you escaped. Yeah. yeah, I'm, yeah. I'm not even positive, but I'm pretty sure you couldn't. Yeah. That's why it works in a way to have the first part just be Midgard because you are there for a while and once you leave you don't go back. Honestly it feels like they're gonna um, what they could do is for all the mini game stuff is just spin those out into mobile games no. and stuff. Which they've done. No, they, they, no. They, they've done that with the I don't think it's a good idea. Yeah, I'm saying I think this is what they do. I think they want to like they That's will, what's gotta be there. I, I, I feel like those will become their own games because like why not? Like that's what Square Enix does like how many Final Fantasy 13 games were there? I think they might be also I mean there's Final Fantasy 15 mini games that were just also mobile games right they're mm-hmm. both I think they'll be that the King's okay. Guard Ch- okay. Chocobo okay. has to be in there okay people will riot if okay. it's not the Chocobo thing and all that other stuff well I mean it's it, it's a game where it's like I, I never believed in it and now I'm seeing it and I'm like this looks fantastic yeah. right like, that's, like, there's, there's a lot of questions still about like yeah what is like, what's it, the scope of this? I understand how it plays out, but like, what exactly am I getting with this? And yeah. maybe we'll have some ch- a chance to get Like, it. you know, it's pretty. You know, the combat system looks <laughs> fun. Pretty. You're in Midgard. But that's I am still it. a little spoiled from Red Dead Redemption in terms of, like, face facial capture. Mm, like, sure. there, there is still a little bit of that, like, people dubbing themselves over Japanese lit movements or something. Sure, yeah. But mm, not a big deal. Yeah, I know. I'm tired. Remember yeah. we thought we were going to that Snoop Dogg party? Yeah, yeah I know. <laughs> <laughs> that's not happening. I don't think. We'll see. Uh, yeah. It's 10 to, yeah. Uh, so... And then, so after that really strong start, the show got a little weird, and it was cool because they spent a lot of time with Final Fantasy VII. Yeah, honestly, then, honestly, if it was just Final Fantasy VII and like maybe one or two other things, it might have been fine. It might have been fine, uh, and, and so, so like, I'm, so I'm not saying it wasn't fine. It's just after that, it was um, I, like I was I made this on, a joke on Twitter, and I was kind of being sar- snarky about this all week. But it's like three is just a commercial. And like Square Enix just took it literally. <laughs> literally it was like showing literal commercials for games that are already out, or or maybe like has some barely new content like coming to Switch. And it's like it felt much more like the kind of funny show where it's like kind of funny shows like that because like they're showing indie games that are like looking for any sort of exposure in the middle of E3. Yeah. It makes sense. Mm-hmm. Square Enix saying the last room that is going to Switch. It's it's. it's much more minor. Wait, well, hey, remember about Life is Strange? Let's yeah, show you how people yeah, are like, like they, they talk about Final Fantasy Crystal Chronicles Remastered. We know. Octopath Traveler coming to PC. We, we know. know. Dragon Quest Builders 2. Dragon Quest 11 for Switch. We Then, like, they really built up to this... The Square Enix Collective? The racing game. Yeah. Which, I mean, it's fine, but... It's one of it's like one of those old NES uh, like what like R- R- RC cars R- R- yeah, yeah. R- 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 RC I can't remember and, and, and uh, Rad Racers yeah. like that like yeah it's fine yeah and then you know they showed Shadowbringers and it was basically an ad like that and game's coming out July second it was basically just like we, that's a known quantity we know everything's gonna be in the expansion and they had a really cool trailer for it and I was amped up watching it sure so I, I had no problem with it I think I think I mean I think for a lot of people who are fans of these games a lot of this stuff worked except for maybe Last Remnant which apparently is bad. Um, according to chat, um, but yeah, but like I, I think for somebody, for a lot of people, a lot of this stuff worked for Square Enix fans. They know what they're getting in for with a lot of this stuff. At the same time, it's just it's weird, and and that, and, and so the, the overall it dragged down the whole show. It was, it was like literal, literal filler. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> and, yeah, and, and then dying like two was already at a conference. Yeah, you know, and we're covering it, so we're gonna feel differently. Maybe, so like, wait, do I, I have to like figure out? Do I need to write about yeah. this? Yeah. And it's like, like they, I get resentful. In, in, in some of those trailers, like, you wasted my time. Right, yeah, I get resentful, exactly, yeah. But um, eventually they got around to... So this was this Romancing Saga 3's coming to the West for the first yeah, time. Yeah, explain us the significance of this. Series. Romancing Saga, so, like, the first time we got one of these games... Well, actually, the first one was on Game Boy, and it was Final Fantasy Legends. Uh, and then I think, like, the Romancing Sagas were the ones that were on Super Nintendo. I'm pretty sure this was a Super Nintendo game we never got. And these are different from, like, Saga Frontier, right? It's a predecessor to Saga Frontier. Okay. That's, That's the same series. That's the only game I've That's played the first, I played. That was the, yeah, that was the PlayStation 1. We got Saga Frontier, Saga Frontier 2. So this is that series, but it's like Final Fantasy where they're not usually connected mm. necessarily. So, you know, we can play that now. And then the, uh, Saga uh, Scarlet Grace, this was a Vita game that came out, like, 2016 that... Again, did not come out to the West, and now it's like coming out to Switch, PlayStation Four. Okay. I'm most excited. Like, I want to try Romancing Saga Three. But the, and that's coming Switch. to the Vita too, for some reason. <laughs> yeah, it actually is coming to the Vita. Man, which weird. Is, yeah, interesting. Uh, there's like a new Final Fantasy Brave XVS thing. Spin-off game, War of the Visions, and it's already announced. But they, this is the first English trailer mm-hmm. that they showed. 
Uh, this is kind of interesting. There's the uh, the Bulletstorm yeah. people. People can fly are making a new shooter for them called Outriders. Yeah, I, I, I wrote the story for this, and I, I, I couldn't explain to you what it is. Other no, than, other than it, it's three player drop in drop out multiplayer cooperative game with um, a design that looks like a much more uh, organic Mad Max. And by organic, I mean the weapons look like they're maybe like, alive. Oh, uh, like they're like pulsing. Yeah, like maybe they're pulsing. Maybe there's some veins going through. Ooh, yes, biomechanical. Nice. Uh, but also, that might just be the, the way that they, or, like the, the ornations on the on the weapons or whatever. Who knows? But that's all I could tell you because I, I just, I don't know. And they showed a trailer. Then they had the, one of the directors come out or one of the executive producers. Yeah, like three people and come the, out. No, but the, then they showed a, a behind the scenes video where they're like, behind "We're gonna give you more." Right. Nothing more. And they didn't really say anything throughout any of this. Really, they really didn't talk about what the game was. It was weird. It's it's frustrating, and I think that this is like a theme throughout all of E three. And so the fact that every show had something like this, it's just frustrating. I, I'm, yeah, I'm like, I'm over you, it. I'm sick of it. Racking your brain trying to. Parse yeah, I was video. like, I was already. Like, <laughs> this is your job. Yeah, and I'm like already. Yeah, I know. I'm like already like pretty tired. And like I'm like I'll do this one. And then like as soon as I get on, I'm like, fuck. I just I don't get it. I just and it's like again I get kind of resentful. But it's uh, I think it's for most people they're just gonna they're gonna forget about it or overlook it or be like oh people can fly is making a new game. I'll learn more about that later. That's fine. Uh, but just when you start examining it a little bit closer, that's when it falls apart. Mm -hmm. So next thing was uh, they, they announced Final Fantasy VIII is finally getting another remastered. pure like fan service moment. Yeah, but uh, well, it's cool because Seven and Nine have had remasters for a while now, and it just seemed like they were skipping eight, and now now it's happening. So now you'll be able to play this. Some people were weird about this one to me. Like they had bizarre <laughs> expectations about what a Final Fantasy VIII remaster would be. It looks to be almost exactly what they did for Seven and Nine. It, it might be. I like know with those little cheats built in. Kind of thing. <laughs> yeah, but I mean, just like, graphically, like it's just it's a remaster. It's just like upres. And if you if you actually compare it to like what the game looks like, it's a noticeable difference. It's, well, not, it's not any more than what they did for Seven or Nine. It's I, not I think, any less. I think the or difference maybe, might be like if if this game really doesn't have its source code, then what they're doing is they're just putting on an emulator and then using the emulator's features to upres it to upscale it basically, which. Makes games look better for sure. It just it might it might not have the same exact I, polish. Is the wrong word because those other versions don't. I, I, yeah, know, I, I know. What you're I mean, what's the, I, I don't. I mean, if that was true, I'm not sure what the difference is. difference would be for a lot of these people. Yeah, I, I think yeah, yeah. I'm just watching the video again and just. I mean, for me, the big difference is like you can actually see their face. Because their face was always right. kind of flat and this, isolated. Yeah, and, and the thing is, exactly like, and the truth is, pl those PlayStation emulators are really good to the point where they can make those games like they make the polygons stop swimming. They can make them look pretty good. So mm -hmm. yeah, at least for the character models. Yeah, I, mean, yeah. I don't know what people thought was going to happen when they re re when they released Final Fantasy VIII on the, these systems. Uh, from chat, Scratty Bones, and I think this is pretty eloquently put. He says, "Woo!" Final Fantasy VIII! <laughs> Woo! -hoo! I like Final Fantasy VIII. I do like VIII also. I'm on Team Final Fantasy VIII. <laughs> you know, I, I never understood the hate for for Final Fantasy VIII until, like, maybe ten years after it came the out. The system like, is confusing. Their guns have triggers. Gun, or their the swords Gunplay. have triggers. And they're back they shouldn't. Final Fantasy XIV. It's stupid. <laughs> be a gun or be a sword. Make up your goddamn mind. I wasn't sure about eight, And then, after disc one, I was, like, super on board. It got, it got really good. I like eight. I mean, I like all... I like most of the Final Fantasy Because it felt like it was grown up. I mean, not, not to say the fantasy... It looked like it was. Bad, it looked like it was but... trying really hard to grow up. Well, that yeah. was. That's my memory. Of well, that game. was like the big like swagger follow up to Final right. Fantasy VII. Yeah, exactly. It, 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 it had more eyes on it than maybe any Final Fantasy. And it, it felt like a, a sophomore, it, it not like, slump, yeah. like a sophomore trying to. It was hard. a huge jump from like the sophomore polygons of Cloud to all of a sudden you have this full body like main character, right? Yeah, it was a big jump. Yeah, it was <clears> back in the day. It was one of the most. I mean, I remember that when they released the CG intro for the first time, and it was like, everyone was like. Deal. Yeah. Yeah. Who's there, man? Yeah. How did you even watch that back then? God, well, on real player. Probably serve. Yeah. I think GameSpot Sounds had like... videos. Oh, this is ninety. Game trailers was around. Yeah. Like GameSpot was around. You can download videos. Okay. They right. suck. That must have been it. Quick time. Glorious quick time. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and finally, finally, said, so, yeah, and like you know, close. And this is kind of the thing of the show was ending strong, starting strong. Uh, Marvel's Avengers, which we knew was coming. Uh, got a decent look at it. It's going to be <laughs> Captain America, Thor, Iron Man, Hulk. Uh, Scar uh, Scarlet Witch, Black Widow, hilariously not uh, Hawkeye. I don't know if you heard the the, yeah, the guy said Hawkeye. It's kind of weird to only leave out one person, but it, I, I'm still a little confused about what the game is because it sounds like there's a campaign that's there like a single player solo campaign. or co-op, like two player, and then there's going to be some kind of more per like online mode that's going to get DLC and extra characters added. 
That's yeah, gonna be like I didn't a understand. separate thing. I didn't understand that part. So, like, if they add characters, does that change the story? Or I don't think there's gonna be much story to whatever that is. Or what if it is? It'll be very different. Because I can't imagine they're gonna like want to be bringing all these people back in for voice acting constantly, especially if they add characters. Like, we have to get what Hulk's line for every possible. Or maybe thing. the story is just those core five. Or yeah, whatever. that's what I'm saying. Yeah. There's like story mode, and then there's this thing yeah. where, like, when you buy Ant Man or whatever, which eventually happens. You're not going to be able to play him in the main campaign. You don't buy Ant Man though. He you don't. Free. It's free. He's free. Yeah. yeah. But he'll be he, free in there. whatever this multiplayer mode is that they're going to want to try to turn into a persistent online thing. So what is this game? I imagine it's going to be an action adventure brawler RPG brawler. sort of thing. It's so, probably play quite a bit. Like it, it looks like it's a really built on the Tomb Raider engine more than anything to me. Interesting. So. Okay. Uh, just from what I was seeing, there, there's a press release saying you can like kind of customize your characters in some way, like really? stats and stuff. So. so some RPG elements. Yeah. Right. Yeah. I, I expect it to be a bit like Tomb Raider without as much stuff. Hawkeye's busy being sad. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> he lost his family. <laughs> but you know they, they they did a good job of making this seem like a big deal, which isn't very hard because it's the Avengers right, right. now. Like they didn't they didn't fail the moment. Uh, no, they, I mean, look, I, I didn't think it was a good presentation. On the stream, it kind of failed because the audio was really off for some uh, reason, but I guess in person, it must, must have liked it better. Yeah, yeah. And I, again, we have a bad TV, so I think it might have been oh, worse for us, too. but I think it, it, it definitely also sounded like it was a bad mix. But, I mean, for me, it was like it was a bad presentation. I don't understand what this game is, and yet I don't think it failed the moment, right? Because I think it kind of did what it needed to do, and, and it made it seem like an important game where, okay, I don't know what it is, but they're taking it seriously. It seems like they're spending a lot of money. Why would they do that unless they're really certain? Because no one really does that anymore unless they're certain. Uh, people don't put a lot it of money. It seems like a pretty hard miss, doesn't it? Right. And it seems like one of those things where it's like it's worth taking the time to get it right. Because look what happened with Spider-Man. Yeah. And if, yeah. yeah, if you could do that, there's a lot of money for the taking. And if you have this live service thing that could work, there's a ton of money for that is like certain for the next couple of years on the table for the taking, so don't fuck it up. Like it's that's it. I mean, you have a couple of like reliable developers on here. Crystal Dynamics. They're putting a lot of people on. This. Like around the world, like all right. these studios. There's like news all hands on deck. Yes, if exactly. you're not a Japanese studio. Right, and it's like actually maybe even some of them were. No, I'm yeah, sure. but and it's like you know again, this is not Ubisoft, and they're 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 probably not as good at that as, as Ubisoft. But still, they have a lot of teams going, and and. You don't do that unless you're sure, okay. certain in this day and age. And that's so. the thing about the show. Is like, it's cert- it almost was a two-game <coughs> show. There's a couple, like, I thought, Bomp- it's cool to see Final Fantasy Sure. Master. I'm it's like, oh, Romancing Saga, that's neat. The, the new boots are people making fine. It, it felt like this could have been a 45-minute show. Mm-hmm. And it yeah. could have been much more just without, those without two the, games. Without the, the filler in the middle. I mean, they, at one point they showed that Kingdom Hearts DLC trailer that was literally shown at that concert a little mm-hmm. bit ago, right? It was like, okay. Um, you know, there, there, there were things like that. Where, or um, There were some, like... World War. There's some like Call of Duty oh, throwback. Battalion. They showed 1944. A lot of that. Yeah. And they're like. Oh yeah, that. All right, 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 right. About, yeah. I and mean, that might. I think it might already be on Steam too. I'm not yeah, sure. I think. I think it's out. Yeah. Yeah. So it's weird. I mean, it's fine, but it's. It, yeah. yeah, like, and it's. It's one of these third-party conferences. This is what they are a lot of times, yeah, where they, they they just have to find out the filler to put between the big things that they really do have to sell, and. They want to be part I of mean, the moment. Like, it's probably a better it's a better opener and finisher than anyone else had. Like, yeah, for that, sure. This look at Avengers was much more interesting than the look at Halo Infinite. Yes, that's fair because like, at least they're like, for, well, first because it's new, right. it's completely new, so yeah. we, so we don't know what to make of it. Um, Which is what they showed. I mean, but what they showed, I still don't, I don't know what they showed was just like it was a lot of story stuff, right? Yeah, but it was at least it was in game <laughs> at least I guess. I guess so. Yeah, right. Still, I still. I mean, if you're right. you know what you're getting to, I guess. But like, the, the right. So we saw the character see, models, like, and well, that's what's like, different. Yeah, you, you, we saw the character models, and it's we like saw the voice actors and the voice actors. Um, and, and so like, that's like, oh, okay, everyone knows what these characters look like in their heads, or in movies, or in comics. So now this is what they look like in this video game, and that's actually a big deal for this franchise. I guess I mean, yeah, I, I get what you're saying, but at the same time, it's like it's not, it's not so much better than Halo. It's not like so much more in depth in any way that I'm like. It's like a home run where those other things weren't. It's just... I mean, Final Fantasy VII is the best thing. Final Fantasy VII might be the the best game showing of a game of all the press at all the press conferences. I think so you might be right, yeah. I, I think know. a lot of people who thought they weren't interested in this were turned around by that. Same here. I think, yeah. I think that presentation sh- sold the most copies of a video game. I think you might be right. <laughs> and, 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 yeah, and the reason is because the gameplay looked really good. It looked very good. Yeah, very and, and, and because fine. it was just gameplay. I think, I think if Gears of War had... Or if Gears 5, excuse me, 
had gameplay, I think it would have done a lot better. It wouldn't have competed with Final Fantasy VII, but that's but, okay. But that's something. Yeah. Well, and it's like, again, if the, game, if the problem is there's nothing all that interesting in the gameplay of Gears 5, well, it's, it's like, well, why isn't there then? Right. Why isn't there something like really cool you can show? Why isn't right. there some that's moment that game. people are going to cheer for? Right. Why are you even making this? There, are, there were like 15 moments in that Final Fantasy 15 thing that people cheered for. If there aren't that moments in Gear 5, is Gears 5 something we're investing that much in? If yeah, you need to go back, you, you need go back and figure it out. Right. right. Yeah. Um, yeah, I, but those are the big shows today. Uh, I guess, like, uh, any other, like, do you guys, like, want to rank I, things up to this point? I mean, yeah, I didn't get to see <coughs> PC gaming show or kind of funny myself. I, I, I wrote some well, stuff Well, we, we didn't see anything for PC gaming no, among the three of us. all gone. Like, when we talked about the one thing that was the big thing, and I, there were some other headlines, right. I'm sure. Um, you and I watched kind of funny. There's a lot of cool indie games, because I, I got grooved on some of them before. Right, yeah. So this was the second kind of funny game showcase. They yeah. did one last year for... I think it was in January, actually. Was it, was it only just January? It was, it yeah. was December or January. I think I it was January. Yeah, like, it, they did something similar, right? Because they wanted to... Oh, they wanted to make up for the lack of PSX. Italian That's what came, it was. Battalion came out in May, by the way. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah, they that did was a lot of time for that game, then. <laughs> My God. It was just a commercial. I mean, especially for Literally. a game that... Did, did you know that existed? I did yeah. actually just because I saw it on Steam last night. <laughs> They're trying to push it because like, you know it, it, there's a section on Steam right now that's like live from LA for yeah. E3, and I clicked on that and that's where it was. Oof. Anyways, yeah, kind of funny. Yes, uh, uh, kind of funny was good. It was um, it was 60 indie games. They were all indie games. A lot of those games were uh, like like we were saying like it was a game's coming to Switch or it's getting a, or it's getting a Kickstarter. Like it's that level. Th- there of was stuff. A, there was a at least for these like there's a purpose right. They're either brand new trailers that like. They're just coming out of announcement, or they're coming to console. But it's also or... it's about the expectations, and yeah. it's also like kind of funny realized what they have, and they positioned it very much as these are developers that don't get a chance to show anything at E3. We're gonna for give the them that. Part. We're gonna give them that chance. Yeah, for the most part, but for the vast majority of them, yeah, uh, we're gonna give them that chance. And it's like you know what? That's um, that's almost noble. It's yeah. almost like yeah, it's, cool. it, it's a cool thing to do, and it worked really well. And the, the presentation was really good. It's and snappy. It, and it was really well paced. Even yeah. when there was like stuff like, um, what was the one that was like, we watched that and we're like, I, I feel like we already knew this or whatever. And then, Oh, the, the after party, because that's showing up on Xbox. Like, right, like, something yeah. like that. And it was like, but it was the trailer itself was like a really like breath of fresh air because it was like, it was like chill right after a couple of things that were like super violent. So it's like, it, it was well put together. It was it was good. I, I, I'm just like struggling to remember like any one game that like well, stands out to yeah. me. Yeah, I mean we did a total Skate of what, like eleven stories. Skaper was probably yeah. the one almost most I mean, people. We've seen Skaper before too, but that was really cool. Yeah, people people played it at GDC, but now it's got a Kickstarter and there's a demo if you go to like skatebird.com or something. Um, yeah, and I I, I thought that uh, Blood Root looked pretty good, um, where like you're using the world uh, to like move around and, and kill a bunch of stuff as Mr. Wolf. Um, that is coming out to Steam soon, so I got a code. I'm gonna try it today. And then there was that like Castlevania looking game where you play as three characters. We thought that was like a total Mike game. I forgot what it was called. Yeah, we didn't yeah. write about it. Yeah, but, but it's, <laughs> yeah. So there was a lot, a lot of cool stuff in there. Right. Uh, uh, four guns. Like it, 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 this is two D game that has some big Dead Cell vibes. Yeah. Is that the, the one? Is that the one yeah, with the, like the really cool looking uh, lady character? Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah that, that looks really, awesome. Yeah. It really does. I like that. Looks There's something about like Ripping Saga, which yeah. is like a link to the past with frog. Right. And they, they ended with like this like one that was like a kind of funny best friend. Yeah. Uh, who's like you know like a one person team. Yeah. And he's making like this like 3D action game <laughs> that looks like it looks like slapped together with duct tape, and I love it. I love the way it looks. Because <laughs> you just love the jank. <laughs> yeah, I love the jank, but it's like it's like because you know there's gonna be some like wild mechanics in there that are new and fresh. Or, or, or even the ways it's broken will feel cool. Um, I, I really like the way it It seems like an exploration game, and then it turned into a third-person shooting game. With like some like almost like Mass Effect multiplayer vibes. Yeah, and then it turned like, into like magical abilities, like uh-huh. it teased this like there's like, like creature. It's like you're playing as like a Vanguard class from Mass Effect's uh, multiplayer, yeah. Um, I don't know. It was, it was cool. I'm glad, they, I'm glad they did it. I'm glad they showed up in it. It was, uh, it was a good kind of uh, break from all the other ones. And l- expectations were so low, that's like, it was whatever. Yeah, that's funny. Hmm. You know what? What? Square Enix story of ours is doing the best so far. Tell me. The Last Remnant one. Oh my god. The one that I had to convince you to write. (laughs) The one you're like, why are we writing this? I'm like, no, I think we should write this. And everyone says it's bad! Like, why? I I don't know. You like it? I never played it. Oh, okay. Alright. Maybe I will now. Yeah, I guess. I mean, it's an RPG on Switch, maybe. Yeah, I actually, I, honestly, when I told you right, I think I got it confused with the last story, that Project Rainfall game. Right, the, the one with the, the dragons or whatever? Yeah, that, that one was, that was um, Sakaguchi's No, that was, that was Blue Dragon. Well, Blue Dragon, no, oh, no, no Blue, Blue Dragon, Dragon also Sakaguchi. 
That was his first one. This is the one that came out. Odyssey? No, this, the, the, the third one. So the first one was Blue Dragon. It's all the same Odyssey. Honestly, it's all the same. The third one was game. Last Story, and it was for Last Wii. Story. Okay, yeah. yeah. Uh, they might they might as well be the same game. I'm pretty sure. <laughs> may as well be dead. <laughs> you know what? You want some fucking bread tonight? Oh, uh, free bread. <laughs> He, we went to the the, the Grand Central Store Market, market. and the, the, it was everything was closing, so he got some free bread that he won't shut the fuck up about. The the the, <laughs> the restaurant in there that makes peanut butter and jelly I think, sandwiches I think it's just called PB and J. Had PB and J L A. Of bread, I'm like, and I, as we were approaching, I was looking at these loaves of bread. Man, that looks delicious. And he's like, I walk past, and he's like, Hey guys, free bread. <laughs> I like, thought we would all grab one. I was like, Guys, we can each. So I'm, I'm like, I know, I don't want to carry this bread. I'm not gonna have three loaves of bread in our Airbnb that we're not even gonna finish a loaf. We're still have two. We're gonna finish the challenge that we got from the grocery store. Yeah, because you got shitty whole wheat. <laughs> and then it makes us try it, and it's just Wonder Bread. <laughs> no, they're idiots. It tastes so like Wonder Bread. I'm sorry, it tastes like Schwabels. <laughs> oh my god. All right, so yeah, I'll tell you what. Moving on. <laughs> it, it almost sounded like Square Enix was bad, but I actually liked that show. But like, I have enjoyed watching. I, my Part expectations were were completely met and then exceeded because Final Fantasy VII looked so good and. And I think I, again, don't think Avengers was great, but at least it was interesting in the ways that I don't think it was great. Like I'm still like very curious, and they showed something. At some point, you have to show what that game is. Not even what it is. You have to start showing the game. They started. It's been five years since. Now they let's see it. the next thing. They're gonna have multiple opportunities to do that. So. Yeah. But We've got a release date for it, right? No. March third. Yeah, no? yeah. March third. I mean, it's like it's coming. Man, it's like a lot of quarter one. 2000. Well, Xbox had a lot of 2020 games too. Yeah, right. Like, well, I, mean, I, I think they had multiple ones in February, so yeah. Oh my. No, no, yeah, it's worked out well so far. I think a lot of people are, th- are feeling this is like a weird E3. I mean, we kind of talked about this. It's what we expect. It was always it's, it's, yeah, bound to be a bit of a slower like, one. There wasn't a whole lot of games that are coming out this year across all the press conferences, right? Like, really? No. Not, none with 2019 or something crazy. Yeah. I mean, we had a couple really good years. It was two years <laughs> ago. I think what two, what are you looking at me for? I'm just like someone said, "Yo, free bread." <laughs> <laughs> I think what uh, like the, the the year the Switch came out, where it was like Odyssey and Breath of the Wild was ridiculous. I think the year before that was like right. Overwatch, uh, Overwatch, Doom, Doom. Uh, Not that we were excited about Doom at E3, but yeah, Uncharted, you know, for you know a lot of things. So I, you know, we're definitely at the end of a console cycle. That's why Nintendo's exciting tomorrow because they're not at the end of a console cycle. But they also <coughs> don't really need to announce anything. It seems like they right, have and, they, and they don't always a lot of three. games coming already. Right, they, they always they've seen to get in this uh, routine where sometimes they disappoint people at E3 because people just forget that other Nintendo directs exist. People forget that we just got Link's Awakening announced at a Nintendo direct a few mm-hmm. weeks or months ago or whatever. Uh, that happened this year. They could have just saved that for E3, and that would have been the surprise there. But they they have I mean, surprises throughout the year instead, and they focus on what they want to sell at E3. I mean, and it's like they did the Pokemon deep dive last week instead of saving it. Right, and it's like at a certain point, it's like guys just like be excited for all the other stuff we're getting surprised by Nintendo throughout the year instead of wanting it all on at E3 for some weird reason. Yeah, I, mean, I think they need one. I think it'd be I hope no. I, I think I I want them to have some surprises. I think it'd be good for them to have surprises. I don't know if they think they need to have a surprise. That's yeah. where I'm at with them. Um, I think their goal is going to be selling Luigi's Mansion Three, uh, Pokemon, and, and Animal Crossing. Like Fire Emblem. Yeah, that's actually the question now is. How I mean, much Animal Crossing are they showing? You know, they, you know, they've gotten really good about saying when games have gotten delayed, and they haven't said that about Animal Crossing yet, and they've previously They said, might be saying it. Well, I feel like they would have said it before now. Maybe, maybe. Because uh, okay. they, they came out, I can't remember what game they just did that with. Metro Prime. Metro Prime, that's right. And they're like, hey. So started. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, I, I, I would imagine we're going to get an, the Animal Crossing. I mean, that's the thing. Like, if Metro Prime had, uh, was going along, this feels like when we might have like seen our first actual something of that, but now that's not Right, now we know that's not going to happen. There's right. like some things that would let beyond games I would like to see, like um, Super Nintendo games finally coming now. I think that happens. GameCube even. I mean, cool. think about that. That last lineup of NES games was pretty weak. Um, so I think there's. They're a bit, already getting there, yeah. Um, the, this bro- the Wallace in chat brought this up. Um, he was bummed out because Microsoft announced that they're ending the Xbox backwards compatible program. Yeah, but a blog post too or something. Yeah, like but that. it's like they had one more thing, like they had one more batch, and they brought out games like Enslaved from uh, yeah. from. Uh, Again, I can't remember the name of the studio, but it's the Ninja one that, Theory. Ninja Theory, right? Um, but it's, I mean, there's a finite number of games that they're going to be able to bring back, right? Well, now they, they got to start working on backwards compatibility for the next system now. Figuring but I think that. the next system is just going to run this it's stuff the almost natively, yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, so I don't think I, I don't think that's going to be a problem at all. I guess uh, maybe the deals, the, like with with developers, will have to be done again for some reason because they like maybe they have they didn't plan that far ahead for that. But mm-hmm. um, but I'm, I'm I'm not surprised that that program came to an end. They 
done almost everything. I'm sure there are gaps. Like what? Uh, he's okay. So he says there's so many great games he was waiting for. I would imagine for a lot of those games, though, there's going to be issues with licensing, music. Yeah, because they have a lot of the first party stuff already. I'm wondering covered. what exactly. I mean, I don't doubt him, but I'm wondering what exactly. I, I, I can't think of anything anymore. Like, I mean, I'm, of, like yeah, but I mean, I don't know. Like, I, it may, so maybe like they could have just kept going, but I bet, I bet the reason is. It's all those games that people want still, they've asked about, and they're like, we've reached the point where we're getting diminishing returns, where we have to do so... It's like peak oil. Like, it takes one barrel of oil to get, like, to get one barrel of oil out of the ground. And it's like, it takes so much effort to get one more game on this program from these, de- from these like, reluctant developers and publishers, or it takes, like, so much more work for licensing that it's no longer worth it. And, and, and I get it. So I'm, I'm not surprised. Um... I'm trying to think, was there any other news that sort of broke uh, today that we should talk about? Not really. It is such tired. a blur. <laughs> yeah, I think, I think we're just run down. I think we're, it's, not, uh, we're not partying tonight anymore. Yeah, I, so that was... A, I mean, <laughs> was, I'm not. You guys can... No, I, I think I'm not either. It was, it's been um, a long couple of days, though, right? This has felt like one of the longest... This is... It, yeah, we're, yeah, and it's nice because Sony's not even here, so why does it feel so long? Because yeah, it started on it, Thursday. Because Google started on Thursday. Oh, that's, that's, right. that's funny how this is a quote-unquote like, slower E3, but... Uh, Oof. And somehow, it, somehow they find ways to, to spread it out and fill all these gaps, and things start overlapping. Like there was the the Xbox, like well, they did a stage show today, like the, inside Xbox, yeah. where they were making announcements, and that was during uh, AMD, which also had a press conference today where they announced the 16 core chip, by the way. Um, and all this stuff is happening at the same time, and it's like that doesn't that wasn't happening in years past, where mm. m- multiple things start overlapping. Uh, it's frustrating to a certain degree because it's like, I think people f- like think, oh, it's going to be quieter, so we can just fit these things in. Yeah, yeah. And it's like, so we can't really cover everything. Because like AMD doesn't normally hold press conferences. You know what? That, that was one of the, they announced the XO19 is going to happen in oh, London. Okay, yeah, and that's yeah. coming in, in November, stuff like that. Yeah. And they announced, um, I can't remember. There was some other stuff that they announced. I'm not going to be able to remember. We should just end this show. Yeah, I'm so tired. <laughs> yeah. Uh, thank, thank you guys for sticking with us tonight. Um, thank you for listening to the show if you're on the audio version. Um, We'll do the rest of them live when we can. It's going to be kind of a, 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 a Swiss cheese schedule when we're yeah, going to be able to yeah. fit these things in with everyone doing everything. But we're going to go hands on with more games tomorrow. Yeah. We have more meetings. Nintendo. Is there anything this week? You guys I mean, are like super excited about Nintendo. I want to see what they're doing, and then Nintendo. I'm excited for. Uh... Can I tell him I'm meeting Kenny Omega? I'm meeting Kenny Omega. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. He's, <laughs> I, I, like, I got, I got an email from, from a company that's like, hey, we're going to have the wrestler Kenny Omega. And oh, I'm, like, oh, I'm like, I might go to this. And then I'm like, I should ask Mike if he wants to meet Kenny Omega. You know, it's like, I almost like barely finished the thought in my head. And Mike is yelling at me, oh, wrestler. I want to meet a wrestler. <laughs> gonna, oh, right. It's Kenny Omega. No, I know, yeah. Oh, my gosh. I can't wait. Um, yeah, that, that, that stuff's going to uh, be fun. I mean, I have, a, I have Square Enix appointments. Like, none of them are for Office. Well, Thursday. we're both seeing Avengers on Thursday. Yeah. I so, kinda, I guess yeah. We'll, so we'll find out what this game is. Maybe. Yeah. Or maybe they might just go over some of the story more and talk about it more. We'll see. And are you going to Cyberpunk, too? I'm going to Cyberpunk, I mean, and that's I, absolutely I'm, what I'm, I'm most excited Wednesday. for. Yeah. Um, I'm absolutely moving. I'm missing that one again. I got year. an interview this year, so I'll talk nice. to him about that stuff. Um, but yeah, I don't know. If there's uh, anything you guys want us to check out, let me know in, in chat or just get us on Twitter and stuff. Uh, but we're going to wrap the show up because I, I, I'm getting tired. I look at Mike. He makes me so feel tired. even more tired. I'm so tired. Thank you guys for listening. We'll catch you tomorrow uh, with more news from E3, more hands-on. Until then, have a good one. And good night. Bye. Yeah. Listen to our other two shows as well if you want to hear other <laughs> stuff. How do I end this? I don't know. Why is it blinking it's 12? Avengers? It just blinks 12 at me. Thursday at 9. At least that's what Tara told me he had. <laughs>